welcome everybody to Games Over Plastic. This is episode number seven, I think. I am Midnight, as always. I am joined by the two best, most amazing co-hosts in the industry. First of all, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the master platinum trophy hunter, the master racer, Sean Mason. How you doing today, Sean? I'm doing great. Um, happy to be here once again, as always. And yeah, uh, no platinums to report this week, unfortunately, because still working on that rebirth plat. Those VR missions kicking my butt. Kicking your butt. Um, and then hopefully uh, you said hopefully we won't have a uh, special appearance from your smoke detector today. We're hoping. Yeah, hopefully. All right. And then last but absolutely not least, we have the master of graphics the indie and live service gaming maestro, the brand new native Texan, Hodge. How we doing, man? I'm tired, but I'm happy that it's the weekend. So uh, I worked, I think it's my second week of work this week, and I worked 66 hours, I think. So, hey, you know what? I need money, so I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, But, yeah, I'm doing good outside of that. I, uh... Haven't been gaming too much, sadly, but I think uh, that intro is going to be fitting for our topic today. So, hell yeah. yeah. All right. That's what's up there. All right. And then I, of course, as I said, I am Midnight, the uh, the RPG single player gamer. It's my intro. Um, let's go ahead and get into the fun administrative stuff. Games over plastic. This is the podcast for the agnostic gamers. No console wars, just fun, just gaming over here. The podcast goes live every other Monday on podcast services worldwide, Spotify, Apple Music, Overcast, every cast. You can always find us. Also, this podcast is available in video glory with webcams and graphics and fancy fun stuff on YouTube. So just go to YouTube and then search for Games Over Plastic. You'll find it. Or if you're listening on audio services, just check the description. I always have a link that goes to the video version. On Spotify and Apple and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> as always, we would appreciate if you could leave us a like if you're on YouTube. Um, please hit the like button. It only takes a second and helps us out greatly. Um, a glass of beer. <laughs> I got distracted. Okay. Um, also, leave a comment if you have something to say. Like if uh, we're talking about a game that you enjoyed, leave a comment. Join the discussion. Um, you never know. If you leave a comment or a question, we may actually use your question or comment in a future episode. And if you're listening on podcast services, as always, please leave us nice five-star ratings. We appreciate it. Um, but anyways, that's enough of the shilling. Let's go ahead and get into some non-gaming fun stuff. Um, Sean, first of all, um, as I as I know and understand, you had a race this morning. My cat's excited about the race. Um, how'd that go? Yeah. Oh, it went great. It was a, just a 10-mile race. So originally, I was scheduled to do a the Providence Marathon, uh, which is supposed to be this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like five weeks ago, they sent us an email, randomly five weeks ago, out of the blue. Oh, yeah, by the way, the race is canceled. I'm like, oh, well, that's that's great to know. You know, people have been training for the marathon, you know, for months, but, you know, you're going to cancel it. So I found a replacement race. It was, you know, just 10 miles. Um it was a lot of fun. It was not a cloud, not a cloud in the sky, no wind. And I finished with 58 minutes, 53 seconds. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, I, I had never really, this is only the second time I've ever done a 10 mile race. And I finished last one, like one second, like faster. So it's kind of like pretty much the same. Um, but yeah, it was overall, it was a good time. There's a lot of people out there and yeah, it was a great, great time. Had a donut after. Nice double chocolate donut from Dunks. Mm. Oh, I'm jealous. Dunkin' Donuts what, uh, for people not from New England. What's your favorite kind of donut? Uh, jelly donut, but I was feeling double chocolate. The jelly donut? Is that like the powdered donut with the jelly inside? Yeah, that when you you kind of like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, th- yeah, those are good. What about you, Hodge? You got a favorite? Boston cream, for sure. Oh, that's my least favorite. What's the Boston what? cream? Is that the chocolate with the cream it's inside? Like, it's I'm not good with the like, names. It's also called an eclair. It's a donut with chocolate frosting on it and like a vanilla like pudding frosting or whatever it's inside. Disgusting. Oh, yeah, my favorite. I don't, like the, I don't like the inside. I don't like the inside. Uh, well, I'm just a the fan Long of Johns the, uh, are good too, but yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just saying the Long Johns. It's the same thing, but without the cream inside. Those are good too. 
Yeah, those are my favorite too. I like the cream filling ones. Uh, I like the long ones um, with the with the cream filling. Pause. <laughs> yeah, pause for sure. Uh, the long ones with the cream, definite pause. <laughs> um, I like the maple and the chocolate are both good. Um, and then also the round ones with like the custard. Um, those are good too. Um, you can't go wrong with almost any donut though. Donuts are good. Yeah, All right. Yeah, I've ever had no. a bad one. I like them. <laughs> I like munchkins too from Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know what that is. It's the donut. It's what yeah, they like called donut holes. Donut holes. Oh, donut yeah. holes. Okay. Yeah, oh, I used to goodness. used to go to Tim Tim Hortons and get the Tim bits. Those are mm. pretty good. You guys know about that? I've never been to Tim Hortons. You guys don't know about know the Timmy Hortons? Isn't that like a north? No, I don't. Well, I guess I'm from the. You north, were from the north. Yeah, the yeah, Midwest. I need Tim Hortons nearby. It's Canadian, is what it, it's a Canadian. It's the biggest. Yeah, coffee. I know it's like the Canadian Seven Eleven, but yeah, the Canadian Starbucks kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's a Seven Eleven. It's not a convenience store. It's like a drive through or. Like oh, a, I always thought it was like a coffee. So, so is it not? So do they do not have a mascot like a like a beaver? You know, you're telling me? you know, we're not going to allow Bucky's slander today. Okay, Bucky's is the goat. Actually, look right there. You see that? It says don't Bucky's mess too. with Texas, but more importantly, Bucky the beaver. It's a Bucky's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, but Tim Hortons is basically like Starbucks. They got a drive through. They sell coffee and donuts and like some deli sandwiches. You can also walk in and, you know, you can get your coffee and sit down and eat. Um, but it's not a convenience store. Like they're not like selling anything really outside mm-hmm. of, uh, baked goods and coffee. Uh, they got bagels Fun too. Yeah. Fun fact. I actually did see a student walking around the halls. They had a Bucky sweatshirt on. I was like, what the heck? We're in new England. Why do you have a, it was the weirdest thing. I didn't know who the student was, so I didn't stop him and ask. But I was like, it was the weirdest thing ever. That student's the goat. If he was your student, you would have to give him extra credit for that. No doubt. They take off points. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is uh, this is offensive. The end of the last episode, you took me by surprise there. I was ending the episode and you were like, Bucky's is overrated. And I was literally like shocked. Like, I can't believe he just said this. All right. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this. What was the weather like while you were out there racing? Was it nice? Oh, it was, it was like perfect weather. It was fifty five. It was like fifty five, sunny, no wind, no clouds. So just like a perfect day. And the course is the course is pretty flat. So it was like overall, it was a good day. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and I think that's a perfect segue. The weather. Let's go ahead and talk about Hodge. You started a brand new job. They're working you to death. Um, you're out there in the Texas weather. How's it been going? How's your first two weeks been? It's good. Since I'm new to the field, I've been learning a lot. I've been working with a guy who's been doing it for like twenty years, so he knows damn near everything about what everything but since he knows everything about everything they give him a lot of work to do so i've been following him around and working a lot but hey it's money i make good money doing it so i can't complain about that but the the heat isn't too bad yet i know because it was in the 80s this week and obviously that makes an attic probably high 90s maybe hundreds but uh i'm waiting for that summer heat that's when it's really gonna get brutal but that's what they pay me the big bucks for i guess but uh, it's, it's been going good. As you can, everyone can see my beard starting to come back. I've, I feel naked without a beard. So, uh, it's on yeah. its way back, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going good. Can't I really. haven't been able to game too much cause of it, but oh, well, I'm in, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying living in Texas, learning the area, uh, kind of like I went out last week with my brother and his wife and went out drinking and it was well, learned the new kind of hot spots to go to and stuff. So it's been good. Heck yeah. Um, also, I got a couple questions. So when you start doing on your own route and you're like, you know, you're doing your own stuff, are they, they're probably going to slowly ramp you up if they said like, they're probably not going to have you do it nearly as much as he is. Yeah, I got, um, yeah, I like, so you do, there's three types of works you do as an HVAC guy. It's a bid and, uh, maintenance and a repair. So, I'll be starting off with maintenance, which is basically going to people's house and doing their annual or biannual just maintenance on their machine and just making sure everything's running well. Then there's service, which is where someone has a problem and you go out and you're like, trying to figure it out for them. And then there's bid, which is after you've serviced, you kind of tell them like, here's what I'm going to have to fix and whatnot. And then you come back and fix it. So I probably won't be doing as much bid and service. I'll mostly be doing maintenance just to kind of get the groove of it. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. I've enjoyed, I, I've been doing it since, or I've been in this quote unquote field since March of last year is when I went to school for it. And so I did that all of last year, which was one of the most tiring years of my life because I was go, working full time and going to school every night. So, uh, but it's been a really interesting career change and it's fun. So I'm enjoying it despite working 60 plus hours a week, but it's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. 
Yeah, it, it is also like the peak season or it's coming into peak season. So, yeah, we're um, not even in the, we're not even in the peak season yet. So it's only going to get busier, but it'll be nice because I'll be on my own rather than following someone. So, they'll, you know, yeah. cover more ground with more people. But yeah, it's I, yeah, it's gonna, it's going to get busy. I would imagine that during the summer, you're probably going to be like slaving away, working crazy hours. Um, but probably mm-hmm. in like the fall and the winter you might only be working like close to 40 hours, like kind of casual. Yeah, it'll be it's a my, lot. It's my school. guess. I work 10 hour days minimum, but um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be slower. Uh, that's kind of when people do more maintenance and touch up stuff just to make sure it's running. Cause obviously people aren't running their heat as much down here. People do apparent like a little, I was actually surprised I saw as many gas furnaces as I do. Cause those are very obviously popular in the North cause it gets cold as hell. But down here I was surprised cause usually there's different ways to heat gas because gas is expensive you know you gotta pay those bills with it but there's electric heat usually people do because they don't use it that much which when you run it it's more expensive but you're running it way less in a warm climate but yep. yeah i barely ever turned my heat on here yeah exactly even in iowa oh, when well i was in an apartment i never turned my heat on because the apartment below me had their heat on and it would just rise up into my apartment so it never <laughs> ran so my bills were so low during the winter because i never had to run mine <laughs> just free heat that's what's up yeah all right so that's cool. Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Happy for you. Make making all that money. Yeah, um, you and you. Speaking of which, you uh, started your new job and you got your license, right? I did. Yeah. So I uh, I started my new job. I had my first two weeks as well. We started on the same day. Synergy right there. Um, and yeah, it's been great. I spent the first week and a half or whatever just studying. Um, have to learn literally everything there is to know about insurance. (laughs) Like I have to know everything about every single policy. Like I learned about home, auto, business, liability, farm, crop, um, ocean marine, inland marine, uh, aviation insurance, um, like pretty much every insurance in the world that you can think of, like I have to know about and be an expert about. I also have to learn all kinds of legal terms and, and all kinds of stuff because, you know, cases can go to court and arbitration. Um, so like, I, I basically feel like a lawyer out here learn, using all kinds of fancy words and stuff. It's, it's, it's really exciting. Um, but yeah, so I did that. And then I took my, uh, exam on Thursday, the, uh, the Texas, uh, insurance adjusters license exam. Um, you have to get at least a 70% and I crushed it. I got a 91% destroyed that shit. So, um, it was pretty easy. So that's good. So now I, uh, I'm not officially licensed yet, um, but I, I've done all the hard work now. Now we just have to submit the paperwork and get everything all set. Um, so I should be officially licensed very soon. Um, and I officially start the new job, like main training starts on the 12th. Um, so because I finished early next week, um, I'm going to have like some chill time, some free time. Like we'll be doing some stuff, a little bit of work, um, but I'm not going to be working hard like Hodge. Like I'll probably have some downtime. <laughs> Um, I might even get like some Final Fantasy uh, on the clock in here and there. We'll see. Um, but starting on the twelfth, though, we'll actually be in real training and stuff, and I won't I won't have free time anymore. It'll be real. Um, so yeah, that's been what's up with me. It's good. Insurance adjusting is pretty cool. Um, it's like it, it's very important. Uh, it's like it's literally the reason why people have insurance. Like if they experience a loss, like if you lose your home or something, um, you know that's why you have insurance so that you can get uh, paid. And, you know, get your home fixed or replaced. So that's what I'll be handling. I'll be handling those claims um, and helping people get their money that they need um, and making sure that it's all legal and and good. Um, So that's going to be fun. Good stuff. Investigating the claims, making sure there's no fraud, um, checking out all the paperwork, um, all the the quotes from the, you know, the the carpenters and the the roofing companies and make sure they get the correct payout that they deserve um, based on the policy terms and and get them uh, back up and going. So that's what I'll be doing. It's exciting. Um, there's a lot of lot of power in the role. There's like no like when you're an adjuster, you basically have you you run the claim. Like you can make the payment whatever you want. Um, and the insurance company is binded by your decision. Um, so whatever I decide, like they have to abide by. Even if I make a mistake, like if I make a mistake and I pay you like double what you were supposed to get you get double what you were supposed to get. The insurance company has to deal with it. Now they may discipline me on the back end, but <laughs> yeah. but yeah, so that's it. It's cool. I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, it's good nice. money. Um, all right. So I think that's pretty much it for uh, the non-gaming fun stuff. Is there anything else anyone wanted to talk about before we get into some games? 
Uh, quickly, yeah. I was if this wasn't if this was coming out May fourth instead of recording May fourth, I would have had to be. I would have said we should do a Star Wars theme. But happy May fourth, may the fourth be with you. Oh yeah, Star Wars here, right? Right? Yeah, Star Wars. I'm just was, kidding. That, I'm debating Star going Trek. to see uh, Star Wars Episode One is in theaters right now. I was debating going to see it again. I haven't seen it since 1999 or 1999. Yeah, in theaters. So, <laughs> oh, the Phantom Menace. Yeah, I was debating going to see it in theaters yeah. after this, but I don't know. We'll hey, yeah. Speaking of which, shout out to Maddie. Mr. Maddie plays. Um, he just put out a video where he uh, he watched The Phantom Menace. I think it's on either Retro Rebound or, or Maddie plays. And I just watched or that Retro last Rewind, night. Maybe. Yeah, right, it might be one of those channels. But yeah, he just uh, did a thing like, you know, does the movie hold up or whatever. And I watched it and it was good. Good video. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about those trilogies. They were okay. Um, I don't think anything really lives up to the original, though personally well, maybe yeah. that's just because i'm old the og trilogies yeah it's the best but yeah i still like the prequels i don't care sequels suck though <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well let's go ahead and let's get into what we are playing shall we um yeah. so let's go ahead we'll start we're gonna go ahead and start with you hodge because you um you have only one game here listed uh obviously you work in 66 hours doesn't leave a lot of time for gaming what have you been playing um, I've just been playing Helldivers 2 when I can. Occasionally I'll get home at, you know, 8 o'clock or whatever, and I'll just, some guys will be playing Helldivers, so I'll jump in with them. Uh, apparently there was some controversy recently that you have to use, you have to sign in with PSN now on PC, and everyone's getting mad about that. I'm like, I don't yeah, know. So you're not going to quit? You're not going to quit because of that? Yeah. Like, everyone's, so like everyone's saying? Yeah. What, it, what the internet's overreacting? Who would have thought? Um, no, I'm not going to because it's one of my favorite games now of all time and me and my friends still love playing it. So yeah, we've been hopping into that each night that I can, cause there's been a couple nights where I get home close to 10. So I've been, I'll just go shower and go straight to bed <laughs> with those days. But yeah, when we can, they have new update. They keep updating it, which is really cool. They, the one thing that sucks is they like nerfing guns and like making other things more powerful. So like they try and change the meta, which is cool. I mean, don't get stale using the same four stratagems every game or whatever, but it kind of sucks. Like if you get used to a weapon, they're like, all right, we nerfed it. There's less ammo. It's not as strong. It's going to have a longer cooldown. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like that. That's lame. Yeah. So it, it gets, it gets annoying because it's also, we, me and my friends always talk about like this is a PVE game. Why are they making it harder for you? Like we just want to slaughter bugs and robots and have fun. Like why do you have to keep making it worse for us? Like like that you never you never nerf the enemy. You only nerf us. Like what what's going on? So it, it get, that kind of part of it's annoying, but the gameplay itself is just still so addicting that I we love playing it. It's kind of, I haven't played Fortnite in a while because of it. Cause that used to be kind of our go-to night game or fall guys. Cause those are that's just more like, well, Fortnite's not that chill, but fall guys is a super chill BR game. So we'd play that, but hell divers is kind of where we're at now. And so that's all I've really had time to play in my free time. Yeah. I, I hate when they do that. That's kind of the same thing that uh, Diablo four did. And everyone was pissed mm. off because like people had their classes and their builds that they liked. And then blizzard went in there and were like, no, screw your fun. We're going to go ahead and nerf this. And we're going to nerf that. We're going to change this. And now your class that you like sucks. Uh, suck it nerds. Basically that's what they do. That's, I don't understand why they do that. Like in going yeah. back to hell divers, why nerf your weapon? If they want to change yeah. the meta, if they want to change the meta, then why not just increase the difficulty or add different objectives to the map or change the map instead? Yeah, I don't I don't know, but it's still a fun game. So, it, I mean, and they're always going to be adding content, new weapons, new str like, I mean, I guess changing it, you might want to balance it a little. But yeah, it is kind of like there used to be a gun. Uh, I mean, there's the gun still there called the rail gun and you used to be able to take out these big enemies with it. And then they nerfed it and it became basically worthless against them. And it's like, well, that was the anti-tank kind of gun. And now you made it not an anti-tank gun. And it's kind of like, why? Now it's just a worthless stratagem no one's going to pick. So it's, I, I don't get that, but whatever. It's I still love the game, so I'm not going to bitch too much about it. <laughs> yeah. Sean, Helldivers 2, anything you you want to say about? Yeah. Um, Hodge, maybe you should have been an exterminator. You can go kill some of those bugs. Maybe it'll be a little easier for you. <laughs> My company does have pest control. Maybe I'll switch departments. Oh, there you go. Maybe you can switch. <laughs> now, that's something I would uh, never no, want I don't, to do. I don't know. I, I've not played Helldivers 2. Um, 
If I haven't played it yet, uh, I, I don't think I will get to it. It's crazy that it's become kind of PS5's biggest hit, like in the generation. Like there isn't a like Returnal is really their only exclusive PS5 game. And even the ones that have been released on PS5, they're still not holding the candle to Helldivers because Helldivers is like the game of the year that people are loving. So of, in terms of multiplayer, obviously. But yeah, it's it's kind of funny that like PS5's biggest game is a multiplayer game no one expected anything from. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, speaking of Helldivers, I saw, um, you know, after they made that change, like you mentioned, the community's up in arms. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this, but they, they are getting massacred on Steam in their reviews right now. Like people, uh, I just went on there. The recent reviews are mostly negative 30 percent, um, which means only 30 percent were positive with 130,000 reviews in the last 30 days. Everybody is going on there pissed off about that change, and they're just leaving a negative review. Um, It's lowered the overall rating down to just a mixed 63%, and I think it was really good before. It wasn't like in the 80s or 90s or something. You know what's what's crazy about that? What? The player count hasn't changed. That's what I was just (laughs) about to check. Um, Do you have those numbers up? I, I just know anecdotally I've heard people say, yeah, but the player count hasn't changed. Yeah, or it's right where it it was average wise. Well, it's like someone made Let's the check. point that like it would have taken you less time to make a PSN account than to change your review. <laughs> like, it's P, P, uh, gamers are so entitled nowadays. Like, they just feel like they're owed everything, and it's like just shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like the the player count actually has dropped a little bit, um, but not a ton. Like the I'm looking here on like April 28th, the the high was. 166,000. Um, and then the high yesterday was 110,000. So it looks like maybe like 50,000 drop. There is still 97,000 players on Steam that are playing it right this second. Um, so it is still doing really good, but it, there's a small drop. Not much, though. Most yeah, people are just talking. It's not going to kill the game. And plus, people always move on. So it's not like it wasn't going to stay that forever. So who cares? Yeah. Eh, who cares? Um, I forgot to mention, by the way, that uh, it's funny. Helldivers 2 is a multiplayer game. Today's topic, everybody, we're going to be rating our five favorite multiplayer games of all time from five through one. It's going to be a fun discussion. Um, all right. So I think, are we satisfied with Helldivers? I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, what have you been playing, sir? All right. So um, I have been playing Sandlands. Um, this game is freaking awesome. I'm uh, really enjoying it. It's not like, you know, it's not a perfect 10 out of 10, but it is, it's like a Ubisoft game combined with anime. And it's, first of all, it's gorgeous to look at. Like I showed uh, a guy I work with, he was like, oh, what are you playing? I'm like, oh, this game called Sandlands. Oh, what's it look like? And I showed him, he's like, whoa, it's like, a, it's like I'm watching an anime here. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's overall, it's a good time. I mean, it's an, it's like a big open world, um, you know, ve- vehicular, um, combat, vehicular movement. Uh, you can get out though. And like, you know, you can, it's kind of like a, almost like a 3d beat em up when you get out, um, this side quests, there's a main quest. It follows this, it follows like the manga and then it kind of, it takes off after the manga too. Like there's some additional stuff that wasn't in the manga. It, the writing is hilarious. Just like Akira Toriyama's regular writing. <laughs> Gives me that, you know, that Dragon Ball vibe, like the OG Dragon Ball vibe. It's overall, it's a fun time. Characters are likable. Um, it's like not nearly as difficult as other games, um, but it's fun. I'm really enjoying it. I would highly suggest it to anyone. If you have not read the manga, like it, it literally tells you the story in the manga. So you don't have to be familiar with it. It wasn't like One Piece Odyssey where you had to watch the first like 750 episodes of One Piece. <laughs> Um, which is a great <laughs> game too, by the way. One Piece Odyssey, highly suggest that. Um, but um, I heard that, Sandland, I heard that was it, good. it is good. Yeah, um, makes me wish that there were more anime JRPGs, like traditional JRPGs, like that. I'm not gonna uh, play this, it because I'm not a weeb, but and I don't watch One Piece. But I I did hear that that One Piece Odyssey was actually like legitimately a good anime game. It was. It was in my top ten last year. Um, Both protect but too much. Sandland. It's not it's not a jrpg like i said it's like an open it's like a ubisoft game combined with like an anime game with uh the side quests are a little fetchy a little fetch questy um like you know go go get this go get this for me thanks thanks but there are some that you know delve deeper into the characters but i'm enjoying it so let me ask you this did you play that dragon ball rpg whatever kakarot or whatever kakarot? it was yeah of course i loved it is this kind of like that uh no, no no this is this is different um it 
a little similar. It's closer to Kakarot than I would say like One Piece Odyssey. We'll say that. But the combat, it's not a fighting. It's not a fighting game. It's not. A, it's more of like a like you can fight people. It's like almost like you guys play Mad Max. You guys, any of you guys play Mad Max the game? Mm-hmm. Oh, the vehicle combat's just like Mad Max. So you're running around. So it's like really fun. But then you can get out of your vehicle, and I it's like a 3D beat 'em up when you get out. Hmm. It's like literally you can like spam square, spam triangle, and you just beat up enemies. I played it's fun. I played uh, Twisted Metal vehicle combat. Never played Twisted Metal. What? <sighs> no. Well, you're younger. <clears throat> All right. Sweet Tooth was weird. Sandland, huh? <laughs> Sweet Tooth yeah, was Sand weird. <laughs> <laughs> I used Sweet Tooth in um, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. If that counts. Never played that. I personally. never played that. It, Dude, it always oh just gosh, felt like such a, a crappy game. Smash Brothers clone that it I was just not never... a Smash clone. It was not a Smash clone. But speaking <laughs> of Smash Brothers, that's the other game I'm playing. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Nice. Woo! Um, I really like uh, Smash Bros. is like freaking awesome. It's one of my favorite franchises of all time. Wasn't on my top ten favorite list, but it just missed my list. Mm. Um, specifically, I'm playing Ultimate right now, which is like the you know the definitive version on Switch. Yeah. And this is a game that I I can play whenever. I can always pick it up and play. Uh, in college, we had countless tournaments of just like Smash Four because it was on the the Wii U version that was like out when I was in college. But we played Melee too. We played Brawl. We played them all. And I just adore Smash. I love. Play- I mean, they they added. I I remember when they added Sora. My like phone blew up. I was in the middle of teaching a class. I <laughs> sat down for lunch. And I had like thirty five notifications. Dude, they added Sora. I was like, no, they didn't. <laughs> Watch it. I was like, couldn't believe it. And then like I love using Cloud. And then I'm like, oh my god. Like, I I was so pumped when they added Cloud. So I, I go all over the place. But my main in uh, Ultimate, I usually use Toon Link. I'm a big big Toon Link fan. Um. Used to used to main Yoshi up until Smash Four, so I still use Yoshi here and there. But I like Wolf too. Um, overall, it's a fun. It's just a fun game. Just pick up and play with friends, you know. Beat the crap out of each other. Um, I have on my Switch. I have over nine hundred hours in Smash Ultimate. Wow! Just because, I mean, just an amazing game. And probably because I ran video game club at my middle school when I taught at middle school, and I would just bring in my copy, and that's like all they would play. So that might be a, a MPY too. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm loving Smash Bros. So much fun. Oh my god. Nice. GameCube controller all the way. Okay. Um, this may surprise you, may not. I've never once played a Smash Brothers game in my life. Never played <sighs> See, Smash. That's more, su- that's more surprising than me not playing Twisted Metal. So like it, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Smash, Smash Brothers, Brothers has a lot more, more popular. A lot more relevance, yeah, yeah no yeah. doubt. I never god. owned I remember when when Brawl came out, oh my! You know what? I'm gonna save it because I'll be talking about Smash later. <laughs> oh, okay. Spoilers. Yeah, I never, I Jeez. never owned, I never owned Smash until uh, Ultimate. Like, because I never, I never owned an N64, GameCube, Wii, or any like. So, I never, I went from NES to Switch. Like, those are the only two Nintendo consoles I've owned. And so I, and it's funny because I've always, I've played all of them, but I, I always. Kirby's always been my main just because I love Kirby. I always loved him as a kid. And so when in ultimate, when you do like that story mode, you only Kirby survives. So like you have to start as Kirby and then you're supposed to unlock people and then you can play as them later. But I, I just stayed as Kirby the entire time because Kirby's my favorite. So, so yeah. you would have loved in brawl, the subspace, the, the main campaign, because it starts out with Mario and Kirby and you get to actually choose who survived like who who doesn't get captured mario or kirby yeah i only play brawl multi just multiplayer with friends like in college brawl. that's that's yeah. when i played brawl melee was always my favorite i mean that's kind of everyone's favorite but uh, i played that at my friend's house all the time and then in college we also played a lot of the original one because that was Ugh, that was game <laughs> because everyone always had an n64 so it was always like let's play mario party uh mario kart or super smash brothers so that's kind of what we always did in college but yeah all right well like i said i'll talk about it yeah later. well we can talk but about that's later. that's what i've been playing nice. smash bros and sandland all right and all S games and also struggling at uh the platinum for final fantasy like you mentioned earlier but uh not really it's not that i'm struggling it's just that you know i'm on these they have three vr missions left and they're just kicking my butt i mean <laughs> i've been on the same one for a week and like i'll, I'll get into the, like there'll be like 10 rounds i'll get to the last round and then I'll die, and I'll be like, oh, 
I would like, want to go through it again. I would be so, I would be <laughs> like, so pissed. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'd want to break I mean, my controller if that. Yeah, I was happen. getting no, angry. I don't, with, I don't break things, you know. I was I'm, a, I'm a rage easy mode, so. <laughs> now, gotta gotta play it on hard. It's it's fun though. I'm I'm gonna get there eventually. Slow burn, but Sandland is a nice relaxing break from that. Nice, very different. All right, so that's what that's what Sean's been playing. Um, let me get into what I've been playing now. I'm playing three games currently. Um, the first of which I am playing Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, I do want to give a belated shout out to GJ, GJ from the Discord, because he gifted me this game. What a nice guy. Um, I got my new PC and, you know, um, I was talking about how I wanted to play some uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, but had to wait a little bit because, you know, I spent all this money on the PC. Money was a little tight. He was like... I got you. He gifted it to me on Steam. Shout out to him. So I've been playing uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 on my new PC. Oh my god. This PC is awesome. I might turn into a PC Master Race elitist nerd. Um, warning everybody, I apologize. Because it's just, it's so good. Like, I, it's so powerful. I'm playing Dragon's Dogma 2 in true 4K. Um, I'm getting like 87, between 70 and 120 frames per second. Um, with VRR um, on the OLED, you lit, it's, you don't notice any frame drops ever. It's just crystal smooth. Um, with ray tracing on too, um, I never really cared about ray tracing. Like you, you watch like a digital foundry video and they show ray tracing and it's just like screenshots. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like neither of these look that great. But when you actually see it like on the OLED and you're actually playing the game, it's actually really cool. Like when you go into these dark areas and the room is is naturally illuminated by the candle on the middle of the table, um, it just makes it feel really immersive and beautiful. Um, like I said, with OLED is the key. Ray tracing and OLED combined, beautiful. Because um, you got the shadows, you got the dark corners, you got the naturally bright spots. Um, it's really good. As far as the game itself, which is a lot more uh, relevant, um, I don't know. Once again, I mentioned before, I don't know if I'm enjoying it, and that is still the case. Um, I'm just like, the combat is okay, but kind of boring. It feels like it's just something to do. Um, the story's all right, but I find myself, I always have like ADHD gamer mentality where I'm always getting distracted, and I'm like, I want to do all the side stories. Um, but the side quests aren't really that great. They're kind of like just like mindless, like fetch quests or, oh, go help this guy because he he got attacked on the road type stuff. And it's just kind of boring. Um, I probably would be best to just stick to the main story. And that, that maybe that's what I'll do. But it's hard for me to do that because I have, you know, ADHD, autistic gamer brain where I want to just do everything. Um, but yeah, so that's Dragon's Dogma 2. It's cool. It looks gorgeous. Um, the pawn system. Let me talk about that. So the pawn system, I was really excited about. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. You get to use your friend's characters um, or their pawns or whatever. They get to roam with you and they can point out stuff that they've learned from their playthrough. Like, oh, there's a chest over here. And on the surface, this sounded so cool. I was like, oh, this is like the coolest concept. Everybody should do it. But you know what I'm finding out? It sucks. Um, I actually would much rather have real companions that are actually written um, because these pawns don't actually have any story. They don't actually have any like real lines other than their the scripted quips that they always say like, oh, uh, I think we should go check over here. Or, or they say like the same things over and over like, oh, you know, my last master only had Beastrin and stuff like it's just random stuff. I would actually prefer like some real written companions that you can actually have stories and quests and maybe even romance here and there. Like that's a lot more cool to me than these pawns. But I mean, the pawns are OK. So that's Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm still playing it. I'm sticking with it. I'm hoping it's going to get better. I think I just need to stick to the story, like I said, because these side quests and the combat really aren't carrying the experience for me. Um, have either of you guys played Dragon's Dogma 2 or have any interest in it? No, no, not really. Okay. Well, so hang on, hang on. It's been two weeks and you're still not enjoying it, yet you're still playing it. I am still playing, but I'm playing three games and I've uh, been working a lot. Yeah, but, um, so uh, I haven't. So many games. There's too many games out there that if you're not enjoying what you're playing, you shouldn't be playing it. It's too that's, many games. That's completely fair and valid. But also as a counterpoint, I haven't played a ton. So I, I'm not just ready to just quit yet because I, like I said, I've been distracted and haven't put in a ton of hours. So it's not like I've played 20 hours and I'm hating it and I'm still sticking with it. I've probably only got like five hours in in the last couple of weeks. Um, all right. The next game that I'm playing is Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Um, I picked that up. First of all, I picked it up on the PC. Um, 
And I was like, I'm going to play it with a controller though, because that's what I want to do. Like, I just want to be casual. I want to lay on the couch on the recliner or whatever. And I just want to play this game with a controller. Come to find out that Civilization VI on Steam does not support controller. Despite the fact that there is a console version, it's on Xbox and PlayStation, but the PC version doesn't support controller. This is fucking stupid. I don't, I don't understand it. Um, so I refunded it. You're muted, Hodge. Damn it! <laughs> were, were you saying something? I was like, oh, so suddenly PC's not all that great. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even play Civ with a controller. Yeah, PC sucks. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah PC <laughs> has its downside. I don't understand that. There are games I've noticed on Steam, games that literally there is a console version of. So they're, therefore, they have controller support on those versions that they had to make. But the PC version will not support controller. And I'm just like, what the fuck's going on here? This doesn't make weird. any sense. Like, why, why can't you develop or port the, the controller scheme into the PC version? Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But anyway, I'm sure, I'm sure it's more complicated than that. But yeah, I get it. Yeah, probably. It's not a drag and drop file. It yeah. should be copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> dot so, PC instead of dot console. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I refunded it on Steam. I was like, no, I want to use a controller. So I picked it up on PlayStation. It was on sale. Uh, got it on PlayStation. I played a, a ton of it. I was getting really addicted. Um, like I played one game. One game that was like 12 hours long <laughs> against the AI. Um, I'm just so addicted. It, this is like the ultimate one more turn game where it's hard to put down. Like you don't want to stop. You just want to keep going. Keep going a little bit further, a little bit further. Let me build out this. Let me get this tank. Let me do this. Is, um, it like, this. is it like a tower defense type game? I've literally never played it, nor have I ever had any interest. So I'm not going to have anything to say about it. But is that kind of what it's like? I don't know what it is. It a strategy game, RTS or... It oh, is okay. a 4X strategy game, um, which is a turn. It's a turn based strategy game where like you're building out cities. You explore the 4X means uh, explore, exploit. Um, I don't even remember who cares. Um, but yeah, basically it's turn based strategy where you build all these cities and then there's diplomacy and you go to war with these other people. Um, there's multiple ways that you can win. You can get a culture victory, a religious victory, a science victory or a military or a conquest victory. Mm -hmm. um and i prefer the conquest usually i like to build up a nice army and then just steamroll over the enemy cities and and stuff like that that's fun um but yeah so civ 6 is really good but i had to put that game aside honestly because it's just too addicting um like when i, I literally spent like one day on a sunday or something like eight hours straight only playing civ um, which is something that i do not do often um i was like yeah this this is too dangerous i gotta put this down so i'm not gonna play that much because I have no self-control. Uh, so that's Civilization VI. Uh, and then finally, last but I suppose not least, uh, you guys will be happy to hear this. I am also playing the original Final Fantasy VII, the classic from 1997 or whatever. I'm playing that on the PlayStation 5. Um, I am five hours in right now. I am at the... I'm basically now in Rebirth. You know, uh, I'm in... Uh, I just got past the grasslands um, and I crossed through the cave. Um, so this would be like I'm in chapter three or whatever of Rebirth, if you will. Um, so I'm now in the area where I'm trying to find Yuffie. And uh, also, where did I just go to? I just There was a point in the story um, where I just got, I, I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <laughs> I'm playing Final Fantasy VII. So far, so good. Um, I, I don't like the combat at all. The combat sucks. It's really old and janky. Um, so most of the time I'm just playing it on three times speed. And sometimes I'm even using the, uh, the cheat mode where it just gives you free health, uh, because I just don't care about playing, uh, what is it? Almost 30 year old combat turn-based combat. It's not doing it for me. Um, but I'm playing in journalism mode pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. I'm just trying to my get my life on journalism mode. I'm just trying to get through the game life. and enjoy the story. Um, the story's good. Um, so far, so far, the story has followed the, the, the rebirth or the remake has been like to a T. I haven't noticed virtually any departures mm -hmm. so far, unless I'm missing something like the, the Midgar section I was mean, identical. Well, the, like, the ending of remake is <laughs> very different, <laughs> very different. <laughs> And the lack of uh, Sephiroth. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, didn't, you didn't fight Sephiroth in this yet, but... Yeah. And the Hell House is just a regular common enemy. Yep, I did notice that. He wasn't yeah. in the arena. 
<laughs> just fought him a couple times. Yeah, um, I was gonna I was gonna ask you what how is it to kind of go through Midgar in like two hours and then be moved on already rather than putting forty hours into it. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Midgar took me about three hours um, to get three through. Hours. It was pretty good. Um, it is obviously rushed. It's not like a 30 hour, 30 hour game like remake was, mm-hmm. um, but it was cool. I'm trying to get a platinum as well. Um, so I'm trying to make sure that I don't miss anything and I can get the platinum trophy because why not platinum one of the all time classics? Um, uh, to just, I think, um, I believe there's a point there's, you have to do something with Aerith before things happen to, to get the you platinum. You also have to do stuff with something with Barrett. Yeah, and if I you think, haven't already made certain decisions. Yeah, there's a couple of things it. you can miss. I know there's a couple of missables. All right. So, Sean, you can tell me about that later. Send me a message or something. Um, yeah, I, I know that you're supposed to be friendly with Barrett the whole time and kind of be rude to the other people because you want him to to pick you uh, for the date. Um, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm always I'm always siding with Barrett. Um so that, that's what I've been doing. Um, and I did get the cross-dressing thing with uh, Cloud. So I got that trophy because that's required. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing what I doing what I got to do. Um, it's fun. Um, I'm, man, I wish I could remember. What the fuck? Because um, this literally happened in Rebirth, too. Like, I went somewhere and something happened. <laughs> oh, fuck. yeah. Thing you do go places and things happen. That is, yeah. that is a thing in the game, yeah. Yeah, professional podcasting <laughs> over here, people. I, I literally can't remember what the hell I played, but let's go ahead and move on. Let's keep it moving. So Great that's game. what I'm playing, those three games. It's been a good time. I've been um, I had the urge really quick. I had the urge to play. I bought Final Fantasy Seven on my Raj Ally uh like a couple of weeks ago, and I've been wanting to go back and play it, but I'm like, I can't right now. I have too many <laughs> things to play, but I really want I really want to play Final Fantasy Seven again. Yeah, it's but, good. Yeah. I'm I'm really enjoying the story, um, just not the combat. And also, sometimes I'm a little confused on where I'm supposed to go because they don't really tell you. I mean, they tell you, but they don't show you. Is what I should yeah. say. Yeah, I get the argument over. with the uh, the cheat codes. Like, I get the argument of like you're not experienced. Like, but at the same, I just want really experience. The story is the main point of Watch going back to Final Fantasy Seven. I'm not a, I'm not a purist. I don't care. I play shit on journalism mode if it's an option, so I don't really care. But uh, I'm just messing with you. Yeah. yeah really, so if yeah, you I don't really care, just, yeah, enjoy place. the wonder of the game. And I don't care what anyone says. Those those graphics aren't aged. I think they look gorgeous. I love that that uh, over the top, like top down 3D mixed with like the kind of the painting pixelated background. I, I love that look. It's I, it's a gorgeous game, I think. But yeah, I'm just happy you're enjoying it. Yeah, or up with the story and kind of they shit. do look good. I'm excited about uh, picking up Yuffie because Yuffie's one of my favorites, as you know. Um, despite what yeah, Sean was saying, Sean's always hating on her, trying to slander her. He's like, I don't even pick her up, fuck her. I'm like, that's just disrespectful. Yeah, it's it's a it's an optional thing, so you have to keep your eyes out for her and Vincent. They're both optional. Party yeah, as, a, as so. I understand it, she's in like the little forest area, um, and mm-hmm. then Vincent, I'll find when I get back to the Shinra. Yeah. mansion or, or whatever so mm-hmm. good times um sean any any defense to, that you want to say about uh <laughs> hating on yuffie and just being just a hater no i'll let i'll let other people you know go back and you know my words were not like that you know <laughs> uh, i think those words were taken a little they were adding a little emphasis a little hyperbole in your speaking uh, they were they were fake I'm news kidding. i'm just kidding fake news midnight that's what it we call fake them. news all right I apologize. I was, you know, just having a little fun with it. All right. Let's go ahead and move on, shall we, guys? Let's get into the main topic of discussion, guys. And it's going to be a good one. Uh, We're going to talk about, as I said, our five favorite games of all time, uh, starting at number five. Um, Wait, our five favorite games of all time? Oh, we're doing that again? Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) I misspoke. (laughs) Our five favorite multiplayer games of all time. There we go. Um, And let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start with uh, Sean, because I've been talking a lot. Like I just rambled for a long time about those games. So I don't want to go first. Uh, Sean, why don't you go ahead and give us your number five? All right. So my number five. Oh, this is a classic right here. We got Warhawk on the original PlayStation 3. This is one of the only online games that I really got into. Oh my gosh, August, I don't know, August 27th, 2007, something like that. I remember, walked into a GameStop, the one in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, my hometown. Not to dox myself, because I don't live there anymore. Well, I do, but, you know, I don't really care. Um, But Warhawk, I went into GameStop, and I'm like, wow, 
GameStop employee goes, yeah, you get a PS3? I go, yeah. He goes, you should get this game Warhawk. Comes with a comes with a microphone. I go, all right. I picked it up, went home, put it in. I'm like, well, there's no single player? What is this? Anyways, a couple hours later, my, my buddy calls me. Hey, I got this game Warhawk. I go, oh, he's like, you want to play with me? I go, yeah, sure. Why not? So we jump in. And oh my gosh, I fell in love with this game. This is like... <laughs> This is like Hell Divers, but it's like PvP, not PVE. You got the two sides. You got the it's like the Eucadian army, um, and there's like a couple different maps. And the maps change depending on the game mode. I remember just running around, driving like vehicles, um, almost like their equivalent of a warthog in Halo. That's how that's what we used to call it. We used to call it the Warhawk Warthog. <laughs> and um, so you have like the turret on the back. You a guy can sit in the um, side, and the, you know the driver. We used to like capture the flag on the Archipelago map and we used to just get in there drive from one side of the um, map to the other get out take the flag get in and then try to drive back and we just we spent countless hours playing this game um it was one of the like i said one of the only multiplayer games i really got into you could customize like the way your ship looked like like skins wise but there was no dl it was not like you know they're not selling skins you just unlocked them in the game by doing challenges which was fun it was third person um but it was so such a different game for me that for that to like catch on with me was so weird i was like how am i enjoying this game <laughs> but i ended up i bought all the dlc it there was a there was a snow map that you could buy and then there was like um an island outpost you could buy too and it came with like there was a drop ship that you could um like literally back in the day drop ship. i was gonna say and back in the day a, when um, dlc was map packs Oh yeah, it was a map pack. They 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 had two map packs in each DLC and two new vehicles. One of them was a drop ship, and literally you could put like ten guys in the drop ship, and you could hover over a vehicle and it would magnetize the vehicle, and you could pick it up and start driving, or, like, flying through the air with a vehicle with you. It was so cool. The ship combat was awesome. I loved all the different game modes. They had like deathmatch, team deathmatch. They had like air team deathmatch. Oh, it was so much fun. And I like have countless memories of like Friday night after school. I had like three friends over because it was split screen and we'd all played a four player online split screen at my house running around. Where are you? Where are you? I'm up <laughs> here. I'm up here. I remember one time, last thing I'll say on it last, uh, I had a sniper rifle and I literally shot a, like a, a war, um, a warhawk, which is like one of the planes. I shot it with a sniper rifle and the warhawk exploded with a sniper. Rifle. I, I was like, this game is awesome. I love it. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. But it caught my, it was so weird. Have you guys ever played warhawk? No, no, I haven't played I, it. I hadn't oh even, my god! I hadn't even heard of it. To be completely, it's honest. so good. It's so good, and the servers are offline now on PS3. But there is a fan, like like someone made like a, their own fan server for it, and it's still online. And like I'm so like some days I'm so tempted to be like I'm gonna jump in and play Warhawk. Nice Warhawk. That's what we used to call. We go. Oh, you guys Warhawking today? <laughs> there you go. So much fun. That's awesome. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, I haven't played that one either. Um, I've heard of it, but I I don't really know what it is. Like, I what, picture what year it. did it come out? 2007, August 2007, because it was right before I went to sixth grade. Okay, it was like the it was like the two weeks before sixth grade. I I yeah, because I didn't I didn't get a PS3 until 2010, I think. So it would probably have come and gone by then. There was a sequel, Starhawk, that I never played. Mm, I feel like I heard it that was one. not as well received as Warhawk. And Warhawk had dedicated servers too, for mm. like they had dedicated ser- Oh my gosh, mm. I used to host my own server sometimes. Loved it. Nice. nice. Yeah, that was, that was that was me getting in my multiplayer bag. That was, that was about it. After that, I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Which is why your list is only one game. No, <laughs> that's, that's it. All right, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Um, Hodge, what's your uh, number five? Uh, my number five is uh, it's Halo, but. Before everyone throws things at me, I'm going to say Halo 4. Here's why. I love I love Halo 2. Yeah, <laughs> I love Halo 2 and I love Halo 3. And obviously the first one playing Blood Gulch was like awesome. Playing Halo 2 was amazing. Playing Halo 3, that's one I probably played a lot more. Uh, second to Halo. So Halo 4, the reason why I'm choosing it is because it came out. I was in college and I would remember... Like if I was getting ready to go out, like if it was a Friday, I'd get off work or class, depending on what stage in college I was in. And I would just boot up Halo 4 because I 
as much as I love Halo, I the TT the TDK time to kill in Halo is so huge that I've always been a SWAT player. I always loved SWAT because it was a little more you just had to get that headshot or get the couple body shots to kill someone rather than you know sitting there putting a whole clip into the into their shield and then whacking them once to kill them once the shield's gone. So I always loved Halo 4 SWAT because one, I was actually fairly good at it, but two, it just I liked that TDK and it, so it brings me back to college when I would be getting ready to go out or I'd start pregaming by myself if I felt like it. Just start having a couple beers and just playing Halo 4 SWAT. Just getting online and playing either with a couple friends before we met up together or friends who weren't in college and we'd play together before I went out. Can, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Is SWAT, is that the shotguns and sniper rifle? No, that's shoddy snipes. Uh, okay. Fair. SWAT's, no, uh, sorry. So SWAT is either DMR or one. battle rifle and you have no shields. Okay. So it's just, and then it's usually your secondary weapon was like a pistol. So it's either DMR, BR. And so basically what you're trying to do is you're getting a couple body shots or one shot to the head would kill them because they didn't, you know, you didn't have any shields. So I've always loved SWAT. It's like even in infinite, when I hop in, I play tactical slayer, which is the same thing. I don't know why they changed the name, but that's, that's what I like playing. I, I like playing the normal modes with them, you know, over shields and all that kind of crap. But the SWAT always stuck out to me and it was, I think it was the, at the best in Halo four. So that's why I'm picking Halo four. Like I played countless hours of one through three with my friends and playing the co-op campaigns and stuff. Like I love, obviously the Bungie halos are peak like three, four, three can't touch it. But I mean, I do love infinite and four and Mm. five can five exists as well. I was going to say infinite is really fucking good. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I love infinite and four, but five, exists um but halo one through three are are the best ones but four is the one i'm gonna pick because i love like i said just the swat and playing in college it just takes me back to that and so that's the kind of the one i put a lot of time into and so that's why i'm choosing four even so everyone put your please put your pitchforks away and torches but um yeah so no no let them know let them know in the comments how what a terrible pick that was everybody come after them engagement wait they have classes in halo now (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> now, people were pissed that you could sprint. They're like, what is this? This isn't Call of Duty. Yeah. God, I remember when Halo 4 came out, everyone in my uh, school was complaining about it. I'm just like, yeah, I'm playing Persona 4. <laughs> I like Halo like, 4. I, I oh mean, even God. the campaign I like. It's, yeah. Dude, the campaign's great. Yeah, I really I really enjoyed it. But, but this is a multiplayer show. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about multiplayer, and Halo 4 SWAT is was my is my number five. So All right. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, yeah, I, I did play uh, SWAT as well. It was SWAT was kind of like the Call of Duty mode, if you will, where you didn't have yeah, to land, you didn't have to land like eight shots. That's kind of what I used to two shots. Yeah, that's why I always, always liked Call of Duty. It's more realistic. You kind of put a couple shots into them. Where Halo, it's like, all right, got to use your entire clip and then hit them with the your secondary. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I always preferred SWAT. All right, that's a good pick. You can't go wrong with Halo. All right, so my number five is going to be MLB The Show. Oh, um, yeah. Right. Love that game. Um, MLB The Show is not a game that I play all the time. Similar to Civ Civilization VI, I have to make the choice not to play MLB The Show because that game will steal my entire life. Um, MLB The Show has stolen two years from me. Um, MLB The Show 19, I played that game so much, like hundreds, probably a thousand plus hours. I was just grinding away on that game so much. And then I took off 20 because I knew I had a problem. But then 21 came out and it was on Xbox for the first time. And I was like, you know what? It's on Game Pass. I'm going to play it. So MLB The Show 21, again, stole my entire life. I played hundreds, thousand hours on that game. Just grinding away at Diamond Dynasty was my main thing. Um, I love that mode. It's like Madden Ultimate Team, but it's free to play, if you will. Um, Like you don't have to spend any money in diamond dynasty what whatsoever they are so generous they give you they just give you cards all you have to do is play the game they're just giving you 99 overall diamond cards you just unlock them from the from the free battle pass from playing the game um or from uh unlocking challenges and stuff like that love mlb the show so much fun 
um, the pitching, the hitting, playing online. Um, in 21, you got to create your own stadiums as well. So I made like a really awesome stadium that had like a beach in the background and like a big mitt that you could hit the ball into. And it was just super cool looking with like a dinosaur out there. <laughs> all kinds, all kinds of cool stuff. There was like an asteroid and a jet plane in the hanging in the air uh, in the outfield or well behind the wall. Uh, so it was very cool. Um, and I was playing online for a while. I was getting kind of sweaty, um, trying to get up to uh, like the highest rank, which I never did. Um, but I did get above like the upper medium ranks, um, like above average ranks. So that was cool. So MLB the show um, that was going to be my pick for number five. Um, Hodge, you ever play any of these? I played, tw- uh, what was it, 21? was Because I did play it when mm-hmm. it first came to Game Pass. And I'm actually surprised. I didn't know you were into baseball. Or I don't know if you watch baseball outside of or just play the games. But, um, yeah, I I enjoyed it. It didn't click with me as much as actually one I was debating putting on my list. But I didn't. I was going to put Chell because I played the NHL games for a long, long time. And I love and I and back in the day, I played Madden NCAA. I always preferred NCAA over Madden, though. But um, yeah, I, I so I've enjoyed a lot of uh, sports games. So I enjoyed a little bit. I didn't play it too long because it just it didn't click with me as much as Chell and uh, NCAA. But yeah, it's I understand why especially baseball fans really like it because it does seem like a really good representation of like playing baseball. So yeah, it's, it's cool. So it, I just never got too into it. Uh, what about you, Sean? You ever play MLB the show? Yeah. With the exception. Uh, so since 2014, I stopped buying sports games with the exception of MLB the show. MLB the show. The first one was 2006. I've bought every single iteration since 2006. Um, I adore the MLB franchise and i before that i played mvp baseball which i loved um the only thing for me though is these are not these are not multiplayer games for me like i would play the franchise mode and the road to the show mode and i would just do simulations and simulate and play do the free agency and really get into it and keep track of all the stats um so they're really not mlb the show in particular was not a multiplayer game for me like my friends weren't into it so like they didn't play it against me because i was a lot better like i had one friend who would sometimes play with me but he didn't he wasn't really that good at it so he didn't really have fun, you know, when you're up 13, nothing in the first inning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I let him, I let him pick the team. I, he would be like, Oh, he, and it's like, I've been on like MLB, like maybe like 11 or 12. And he'd be like, all right, you can pick my team. And he'd give me like the worst. He'd give me the Astros at that time who were like the worst team in baseball <laughs> at that time. And then he'd be like the Yankees or the Tigers who were really good at that time. And, and I'd be up like 13, nothing in the first. And he'd be like, all right. <laughs> yeah. I actually, true. that's why. It, so, yep. There you go. There you go. No, that's why I was going to say that's why it wasn't on my list is just because I didn't play multiplayer, but I love them. will be the show. I still, like I said, I bought every single iteration since 2006. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I, I didn't really think about that until you said that, but cause NCAA and Madden weren't multiplayer games to me. I play you know, like back in the day on like PS2 or whatever. I'd play Madden with my brother, obviously like duels, you know, split screen, but I know yeah, I, Madden and NCAA were always kind of single player games to me. It was Chell that I played with friends pretty much exclusively. So that was a multiplayer game to me. Whereas NCAA was more single player to me because I, I never played Madden or NCAA online because I know I'd get my ass kicked. I wasn't, a, I'm not very good at it. I just, just enjoyed it because i love football but yeah so chell was the one that I, we'd always play 2v2 or whatever and play multiplayer but yeah ncaa was single player and that's the show was single player to me too i never even bought i could i would yeah i'd be the 13 zero in first inning person if i tried that online <laughs> yeah the show honestly is more single player than multiplayer like 80 85 percent or 90 percent of the time that i played it was basically single player um mm-hmm. just grinding to uh to assemble the team like in diamond dynasty um completing like the conquest map doing the challenges beating the ai um but i did do a lot of multiplayer too like you know taking my built team online 1v1 against another person's built team um and just try to just try to beat them in a nine inning game that was a lot mm-hmm. of fun. Had some had some really close games, some extra innings, some walk off home runs, um, good times. Um, I'm not a huge, I'm not a major baseball fan in real life, just because I don't have a team um, that's any good. Because I'm a Pirates fan and they always suck. So, like I, I I watch them a little bit, but not much. 
Um, if, if they were ever good, I would probably watch more, <laughs> but I mean, I like baseball. In, I just don't they, watch it. They were it. good in 2012, 2013, 2014. They were pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so that's my that, fifth that pick. Pretty good years. <laughs> MLB the show. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to, uh, next here. Uh, we have, uh, Sean, your number four. All right. Speaking of baseball, the only baseball game that I would play with my friends, and that is the two I'm making. A, I'm including both of the games. It's the two Mario baseball games here. <laughs> uh, Mario Superstar Baseball on GameCube and Mario Super Sluggers on Wii. Oh, my gosh. I adore these games. Specifically, it was me and my buddy Donnie. Um, we would play literally seven game series of both games. We draft the team. So I'd pick, he'd pick, you know, we do a little snake draft, go back and forth. We would write down the rosters so we knew, and we keep track of the stats at the end of the game. We would have seven game series where, you know, we do like the two, three, two format, like in uh, actually like baseball does. So like he'd get, he'd get his home stadium. I get mine. And oh my gosh, we, I like, we played this game so much that like we had our teams down. Like my first pick would always be Yoshi. And I'd play him in center field very fast. But team chemistry really does matter in this game because when you throw the ball to your uh, – like if you throw the ball to your friend, the, the ball goes further, like faster. Uh, if you throw the ball to someone that is an enemy like Mario and Bowser, it'd be like a – it'd be like potentially a bad throw. So, if, you know, Bowser's at first base, Mario's at third. You throw it first, the throw might be a little off, you know. Um, shout out to Waluigi, one of the best pitchers in the game. <laughs> Um, couldn't hit for a lick though. <laughs> Guy could not hit for a lick. I'll never forget. We were playing the second game, Superstar, um, Super Sluggers, Mario Super Sluggers. I'll never forget. My friend Donnie was up. He had Waluigi up. I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy. Freaking hit a home run with him. And I was so mad. I was so mad at it. And I'm like, this is, this is no, we were playing on Daisy Cruiser, which had a really short porch to right field. It was like, yeah, it was basically Yankee Stadium, AKA a little league field. Um, <laughs> great, like the shots fired. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Waluigi was he was a great pitcher. Uh, Boo was an awesome pitcher. Um, I like Superstar Baseball more. Less characters though, but the game was more um, mechanic. Like it took more skill to be good at Mario Baseball than Super Sluggers. Uh, we played with power ups off, so we played like simulation baseball. No power ups, no nothing, none of that crap that, that they want the kids playing with. <laughs> um no but the maps were really cool especially in super sluggers because um night mode they the maps would change at night so for example if you played at peach's castle during the day um you were inside and there was it was the outfield was all ice because it was like a frozen castle but if you played at night there was like giant icicles falling from the ceilings and if your outfielder got hit by it you'd be frozen <laughs> which is kind of cool <laughs> um wario so i i'll tell a little bit go a little bit more wario stadium was like um like a downtown of a city and like there's like sewers like there's like sewer um like you know like sewer caps in the outfield and at night there would just be like this like stench like ruminating off of them and if your outfielder ran near it they'd be like ah what's going on ah disgusting um if you had friends in the outfield, you could do this like super jump thing where they would jump wicked high and rob home runs. But the best was when you got like a perfect home run. And we got so good at the game that like we could time the jumps pretty good. But when you did one of those super jumps and the, the person still hit the home run, that was like, yeah, that's right. That's a real homer right there. Um, it was awesome. Shout out to baby DK he made his debut in that game. And I really liked him. You could use all the, there was like, 10 different Yoshis you could use. It was the roster was insane for super sluggers. Dude, Donkey Kong's bat was just a punt was a boxing glove. <laughs> so when he hit it, it would just go. It was awesome. Um, <clears throat> used to call Mario a rod all the time. Be like, Oh, a rods up. <laughs> we, had, we had nicknames for all the players. Uh, Waluigi was Pedro Martinez, obviously. Nice. Um, yeah. Boo. I called Randy Johnson. Cause he was a lefty. Um, you could switch. It also, but you could switch them. Like they had a dominant hand, like right or left, mm -hmm. but you could switch them in the menu to make them a lefty. And we would do that. Sometimes I would just mess with my friend and make all my players lefties. Um, <laughs> the, the game was so like you could control with, if you just threw the ball, you could control where it went with the analog stick. But if you like the, the longer you held it down, the faster it would go, the less control you would have. Oh, the game was awesome. I, I, I want to play Mario baseball now. That's awesome. Oh, it sounds good. Honestly, I didn't even know that that existed. Like, I wasn't dude. sure if you were uh, trolling us at first, but yeah, you <laughs> went into so much depth that I am now convinced that it's real. I'm just out here. I'm picturing 
Yoshi in center field. That's hilarious. How is he throwing? Does he even have arms? Is he like shooting? Yeah, he, is he shooting it out of his mouth to throw it in? No, but um, for his spec, instead of diving at the ball, he'll use his tongue. <laughs> it's awesome. But like, so I, I would always go for like the speed teams. I was I would always steal in bags. My friend just gets nice. so mad that he's stealing bags. I love and that. The, the controls were not that like we knew the controls so well that it was like secondhand to us. But for someone who was new, like new to the friend, like I remember when we got to high school. We like our high school was a regional school, so like kids from Rainham came. So it was like Bridgewater Rainham. And some of those kids had no idea how to play. And they joined our friend group when we were playing one day. Like, oh yeah, you know, it's like a baseball game. They're like, how do you throw? What do you mean you just hit? How do you throw to first base? Like, oh yeah, you know, you gotta press A and yeah, yeah, you'll learn, you'll figure it out. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> um Sean just bullying people from other schools, just dude. stomping them out <laughs> at Mario Baseball. It's an amazing game. Oh my god. It sounds fun. I still have Still have my original Superstar Baseball glyph, um, disc and my Super Sluggers gift uh, disc, which I got at a midnight release. It came out um, August 28th, 2008. I got it at a Walmart. I mean, my dad, my dad drove me and um, my, my kid, that kid, Donnie, we drove us to Walmart. Oh, I'll never forget it. We were the only kids there. We were the only people there. Nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah All right. So Mario Baseball, um, Hodge. Any thoughts you have on Mario Baseball? And then well, go I've never, I've after. never played Mario Baseball. I've played obviously like Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, mm-hmm. uh, and then I played Wii Baseball and the Wii Sports thing, which is also awesome. But uh, poor man's Mario Baseball. <laughs> but yeah, I've never, I've never played Mario Baseball. But that sounds, so that sounds weird. awesome. I, I loved Mario Golf and Tennis; those two were awesome. I loved both of those ones. But uh, yeah, I've never played the baseball one. Sounds, sounds awesome. All right. Quick last thing, last thing. I'll then I'll, <laughs> then I'll then I'll shut up. I'll never forget. It was we were playing in little league. I was in fifth grade. I was up at the plate. The kid Donnie was playing catcher. Probably took like two pitches. I st- and the, I stepped out of the box. I go, hey Donnie, you want to come over and I play some Mario baseball? He goes, yeah, sure. The umpire is like looking at us like we're crazy. <laughs> never, I, I'll never forget that. That's like something I just have ingrained in my mind. That's so funny. I love That's that. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. He, he, he was probably kids. wanting to come over. He didn't. He wanted you to ask him. Yeah. Oh, and he goes, oh, he goes, I'll ask my dad when I get in the dugout because his dad was the coach of the other team. So he asked his dad. So then, like, like I remember, I remember forget it. Like, the next time I was up, he's like, yeah, my dad said, yeah. I go, all right, sweet. <laughs> I love that oh, so much. Great. Dude, I freaking love baseball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baseball right. is one of those sports where I, I used to watch it a lot, actually. And then it kind of became a, a sport where if it's on, I'll watch it. But otherwise, I just would rather go to the game. Like that's where I enjoy baseball. Mostly is being in the stadium rather than watching on TV. Whereas football, it's the opposite. I'd rather be at home watching it than in the stadium. But yeah, uh, yeah. Baseball, baseball. I love, like I love going to Wrigley field. I've been there plenty of times and so it's a fun time. All right. All right. Hodge, why don't you hit us with your four? four? My number four is another sports game. We'll keep the sport train rolling. Uh, NBA jam. Uh, the, I'm, I'm kind of combining it to kind of how you did the baseball, the original and the remake one that was on 360, because back in the day, we always played on Sega Genesis, the original one. And then in college, another, this is my second, I guess, college game kind of thing. Uh, in college, we got the arcade one on 360 and we would play that two V two. It's like me and my friends would do that with just pregame before going out to the bars we play nba jam and we made this um, i can't remember all the rules anymore but we made this drinking game out of it just to make it way more fun like if you got slam dunked on which caused your player to fall over you'd have to drink at like each quarter you'd have to like the losing team would have to drink the difference in points and so sometimes when i whoop people's ass they'd get real drunk um but because i was always uh kevin durant playing that game because that dude could sink threes without like with ease that man sunk three so i'd always play as him okay and they also had like the the ones where you could play like obama like they'd have, like these random like, <laughs> like so you're talking about the new the yeah new well that's because i played the, the class 2012, the 2012 version yeah the 2012, 2012 one that's the one i played in college i i did play the original on gen i owned it on genesis and i love yeah, that one Jordan i played stuff, every yeah. time like when we were in new york we hopped on the 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 um, arcade one and we played yeah they had an nba jam machine yeah so we i played nba jam with birdo and a a couple other guys and it was that was a lot of fun too but um our buddy uh, stevie walnuts um 
that was that was a lot of lot of fun but uh yeah so i've always enjoyed the the original but it's the 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 older one is the one that i played all the time in college and yeah we made the drinking game and it was it was so much fun yeah the weird teams they had added in and whatnot and i think i can't i can't be sure i if i might get a couple of facts wrong but i think michael jordan he either didn't want to be in the game or the guy who made it didn't let him be in the game because he was a detroit pistons fan and so he'd um, always make the Bulls terrible. <laughs> so Michael Jordan um, was not. So after he retired, he took he was not part of like the retired players association. So he could not be in video games. Mm. They got an exception for it in 2K11 when he was on the cover. Yep. And then he was on the and then he got an exception for it on 2K12. But I don't think since EA made NBA Jam, I think he only did it for 2K, not for oh, EA. Oh, OK. So. But yeah, but yeah, so he wasn't on the Bulls, then, but it was hilarious because I guess like if the Bulls were losing to the Pistons or something, they'd always miss a game winning three like they were. It was like in the coding that the Bulls couldn't score because the guy who made the game was a Pistons fan and hated the Bulls. <laughs> so wow. that, that's funny. But I never played as the Bulls anyway, because in the newer one, you had Derek Rose on the team who was pretty good, Ugh. but uh, for the game. But I yeah, I always played as OKC because they had Kevin Durant and that dude just and you could also have a uh, retro players on it so it'd be i'd have like kd and like carl malone or something i can't even remember who it was but uh it was yeah it was it was a whole lot of fun the drinking game aspect of it and playing with friends is what made it way more way more fun but yeah i always loved those games and playing them even when i was a kid with the original he's on fire yeah yeah is, i was about to say is there a more iconic line than he's on fire <laughs> like People just randomly say that all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's heating up. Yeah. Those games were great. And shout out to uh, Jordan because he's the GOAT. No questions asked. Well, yeah. Um, obviously. obviously. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other thoughts on uh, NBA Jam, guys? No. I never played it, but I, I just those sayings. I have all the sayings in my head. Like, he's heating up. He's on fire from downtown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Awesome. Classic. Yeah. All right. So my number four, let me go ahead and move on. And this is going to be similar to Hodge's number five. It is going to be Halo. uh, But for me, Halo 3 is my pick. Um, Halo 3 on the Xbox 360 back in like 2006, 2007. Oh, man, I was grinding. Me and my friends, we were playing a ton, playing Team Slayer, uh, Ranked Rank Slayer, um, playing a little bit of SWAT here and there, just having a great time. Um, Love that game. Uh, the campaign, of course, you know, beating it. Uh, this is well, this is a multiplayer episode. Uh, but quickly, I'll just say, you know, beating the campaign on uh, what was it? Legendary difficulty or legendary, whatever to get yeah. the achievement. Always a good time. You, you got to do that when you're playing Halo. It's mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the multiplayer was just phenomenal. Um, just having a great time. Maybe you play capture the flag or big teams and you're riding around in the warthog and you got, you know, your friends driving and you're back there on the gun on the gun and your friend can't drive for shit. And then all of a sudden they flip it and you guys are getting shot at and you're like, come on, bro. Just classic memories. Everybody knows that, um, you know, jumping up with the rocket launcher, um, just good times. But mostly we played uh, either SWAT or Team Slayer. So you're just running around with the battle rifle, uh, running around with the normal assault rifle. Um, and of course, you do the. The, the the classic noob play, you basically just run at them while holding down the trigger with the assault rifle. And then when you get close, boom, you just melee them and finish them off. Classic mm. noob play, yep. but very effective. Yep. <laughs> um, love it. Love Halo. Well, we talked about that last week. I think it was on the music, of course. Halo, iconic. Whoa. Oh, that, I don't think so that was good. even it, but you know it. Um, so, yeah. Halo that, 3 is my number four. You guys got was- any thoughts for that? That was the copyright free version of the theme. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I actually, yeah, I love, I remember when this game came out because at the time I didn't have an Xbox 360 yet, but my buddy, my best friend from high school, who's no longer my friend, but who was in high school, he's my friend and he bought it. And at the time, cause we were playing call of duty th- three together like that was our oh, game wow. we'd, we'd, when we'd play games together and i remember going to um target with him we were gonna buy it and we were both six i think we were six yeah we we're 16 at the time and he went to buy it and they aged they asked his age and so we couldn't get it so we drove over to best why buy. you just lie should well, lie i think because he had an id so they had to look at his id 
and uh and Just so we buy. went over to best buy and they didn't card him so we, we bought it from best buy and we talked about like the adventure of screw target best buy is where it's at and we when we played it just non-stop just co-op on split screen on his xbox until i finally bought mine that later that year and then i bought it we were playing it online all the time but yeah that game that game was an event when it came out it was so epic and playing it online like that was the online game which with a game i'll get to later uh competed with it but yeah it halo 3 i remember that the first time we booted it up and I picked up the Spartan laser, which because we we didn't go to the campaign first. We got it to play multiplayer first, and then we went back mm-hmm. to it later, obviously. Um, so I pick up the Spartan laser. I'm like, I don't know what this is. And I start holding down the trigger. I'm like, it's not doing anything. And then finally it goes off and just, and just kills him. He's like, what was that? I was like, oh, that's what it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, yeah, we put so much time into that online. And it's, it is such a fun, fun game. Like Halo, Halo 1 through 4 online are so good. I love them. Yeah, no doubt. Sean, did you uh you get in, in into any Halo? I didn't play Halo until 2021 for the first time, but my only history with Halo 3 is there was these early series of YouTube videos where there was this like mini Master Chief, like he was like a little toy. RB and the Chief. And the guy would Oh yeah, the Chief. RB and he'd and be the like Chief. you hacks or? Yeah. You are using hacks. Dude, I yeah. I still and and I... Oh, sorry. Continue. No, no, no. I was just saying we used to because I was in like sixth grade, seventh, sixth grade when that came out. And we used to watch those videos and we'd be in like gym class running around going, quit using hacks, you hacks or <laughs> being like little like 12 year old, 11 year old kids. Yeah. RB yeah. the chief. I remember I still every time someone talks about Call of Duty and there was just a moment where our, uh, the chief says uh, Call of Duty, modern gay fuck stupid. And so every single time my friends call, talk about Call of Duty, we go Call of Duty, modern gay fuck stupid. <laughs> Yeah, that's my only history with Halo, like multiplayer. Yeah, Halo, <laughs> Halo's goaded. Um, love that. Mm-hmm. Halo 3 was the pinnacle for me of uh, the multiplayer experience in Halo. Yeah, um, 4 was good. was good. I didn't play much of 1 and 2. I played a little bit, but not a lot. Um, one, yeah, 3 was the one where I really got into. 1, um, actually, I never, I, I said, I've never owned an original Xbox, so I would always have to play it at friends' houses. But I remember back in the day, they um released a demo of halo for pc where all it was was blood gulch and i think sidewinder was the other level i can't remember what it was exactly but it was halo uh blood gulch and you could play big team just constantly like because that's all it was it was just blood Gulch, and so i played that on pc for hours and hours and hours and hours because it was so much fun but yeah halo 3 was like where it peaked in terms of uh multiplayer i just like i said okay. before i just liked four swat but yeah okay. three was an event so two things here uh number one let the record reflect listeners that hodge is an og he's a real call of duty fan because this man said that he used to play call of duty three way before because a lot most people including me uh most people really got into call of duty when four came out now i mm-hmm. did play the first i did play the first call of duty on pc uh Finest like power. back in the day um, and that was fun, but I wasn't a big call of duty head until four, four is what got me into it. Um, but you were on three, so you were an OG, you were a vet in the streets. So salute to you, <laughs> sir. Nobody yeah. can take away your, uh, your flowers, your Dude, stripes. I remember when the first call of duty came out, you know, the crosshairs, it was the dot with like the four lines that would move out if you start moving. And I, mm-hmm. at the time I would play medal of honor because it's just stayed in this, like the center of your screen, like boom right there. And so I was always like, why are these crosshairs doing this? I don't like this Mod- medal of honor is better and then obviously i started playing call of duty i'm like no call of duty is so much better than medal of honor <laughs> call of duty is great um and then the second thing that i wanted to mention is is guess what guys i remembered what i was doing in final fantasy 7 <laughs> so in final fantasy 7 i just got to the city what is it junon or whatever with the Junon's, with the big yeah. cannon um and i went up I hope I didn't screw anything up. Um, I already went up and I'm already in like the parade crap. I'm hoping that I'll be able to back out and go back and get uh, Yuffie because I don't have Yuffie yet. And I'm already in Junon. Um, I can't remember. Hopefully I'll be able to leave the city. Yeah, I think it'll let me. I knew what you were talking about. I didn't want to say it though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's where I'm at in Final Fantasy VII. I'm in Junon, but I need to leave and go pick up Yuffie because she's awesome. I need my uh, Materia Stealing Ninja. All right. So are we, uh, we, everyone, we're satisfied with Halo 3. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and move on to Sean, your number three game, sir. 
All right, it was mentioned a little bit earlier, but not by me, and that is the Mario Party series. The Mario Party series in general. All right, I will I will narrow it down to one game, but I have memories from all the Mario Party games. And specifically, we're going to go with Mario Party 3 for the Nintendo 64. A rare N64 game that I got uh, in 2003. Like it was, I got it in like years after I had my GameCube. But um, we had been playing. I had already had Mario Party Four already at that time. Um, but Mario Party Three, oh, my neighbors got it in like 2000, and I remember playing it over there and like loving it because I put that put that away. <laughs> um, I remember loving it because um, it was different than Mario Party One and Two in that Mario Party Two had a lot of the, the similar games to Mario Party One. They rehashed some of them. Where Mario Party 3 introduced some new ones, and they introduced this character. Now, I know he technically first appeared in Mario Tennis, but I first played as him in Mario Party, and that was my man, a.k.a. Pedro Martinez, Randy Johnson. <laughs> I mean, I'm, Waluigi, wow, that was so bad. Oh, my God. Waluigi. Waluigi. Um, <laughs> well, you did say that he was Randy Johnson because he was a lefty, so. I thought that was Boo. So, Waluigi um yeah so that was that was my first exposure to the wall man over wow. there and i fell in love with this big tall lanky yeah wah -ho, wah -ho. uh i fell in love with him and um he was always my go-to in mario party 3 and from then on he's been my go-to in mario party like um just so many different games and like just the mario party and like the memories you have with it like friends are made but enemies are also made in Mario. <laughs> like steal i'll never forget star. yep stealing like my sister i'd steal her star and she'd throw a fit i'd be like well <laughs> i'm sorry like I, I played a win sorry and we would play we would all the time we'd play me and her and we play two level nine computers and those level nine computers are like not level nine like the, they're like very hard it'd be like it'd be like easy medium hard very hard we play very hard and um they were ruthless. Those compu those computers. They were ruthless. They'd steal anything. Um, you'd have to like mash B when they're trying to steal your coins, and they still get like thirty. You're know, like, are you kidding me? Yeah. But um, sh I also I'll talk a little bit about Mario Party Four as well because they had a lottery system, and as you guys know, I'm a gambling addict. So. <laughs> um, but my I would always play the lottery in that game, and I would always lose. My sister, I'll never forget it. She won the lottery three times in one game and had like 700 coins. Oh my gosh. And me and my friend Trevor were like, are you kidding me? Right now? <laughs> but um, everyone knows Mario Party is like completely random. Like you can win <laughs> yeah. all the mini games. You can get, you can win the mini game star. You can, um, you can win the happening star, which is landing on most of like the question block, like the question mark, like the green spaces. Mm -hmm. But that is completely arbitrary. That's completely random. The only skill it is is the mini games, and even then, it's not skill because some of the games are completely like random. Like in Mario Party um, One, they have like that pipe game where you have to like put the um, treasure chest down a pipe. It's like, completely random. You have no idea. But there was a game in Mario Party Three, a mini game. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but Mario Party Three, there's a mini game where you're riding a train. And you have to pick the right way. You pick left or right, and if you pick the wrong way, you end up back at the start. And I was goaded at that game. And <laughs> I, I don't know. I was like a soothsayer at that game. Anytime that game would come up, my sister would be like, Sean, you got to help me with this. I'm like, all right, I got you. Don't worry. Um, there was a bobsledding game, which introduced me to the sport of bobsledding. Which, uh, cool Runnings I know. introduced me yeah. to the sport. <laughs> Did you see that what movie? Is it? Cool Runnings, the movie, what? the Jamaican bobsled team. Come on now. Oh, that was years after Mario Party 3. Come on. Yeah. Get in my lead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, there was this bobsledding game. There was a minecart game where you'd be like going like this. I don't know. Oh, I, I, just, I have fond memories of like Mario Party. We'd play like fifty turn games, and it was so much fun. And we would they would often end sleepovers. I sleep that kid Donnie. One time he left my house in the middle of the night because we were playing Mario Party, and he got so mad at one of my other. This we were in high school at this point. He got so mad at one of my other friends. He left in the middle of the night. He lived like a street over. He just walked home. <laughs> okay. Do, do you still know this kid, Donnie? Does he listen to the show? Because he's getting so many shout outs, man. He better be listening. Yeah, he does. He does. Right. Yeah, he. I don't see him that often because he lives like two and a half hours away. He's one of the only kids from high school I still talk to. Because, right. um, Shout out to Donnie. Yeah. He better be listening. He's yeah. getting He's getting infinite he's, shout outs. He's, he's the kid that I had to hide Call of Duty from. 
I told that story a couple weeks ago where I used to have to hide Call of Duty in my ceiling. He's that kid. That's funny. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, Mario Party. Love it. Yeah, I I was uh I was thinking about Mario Party for this. Well, I've I don't know like the like when someone says like their favorite Mario Party, I don't really have like because I've only owned the one for Switch. What was that Super Mario Party or whatever it's called? Um, yeah, that's the only one I've ever owned because like I said, I've last Nintendo console I owned before Switch was a NES, but I always played them. But so I don't really know the differences between all of them. But I've there's. I've always played. If anyone goes, oh, I have this Mario Party. I'm like, I don't know what that means, but I'll play it because I love Mario Party. Uh, the only reason I didn't really like think about including it on my list is because I know we were going to do an episode about just party games. And that's kind of what that's a kind of what I think with it's in the name. But that's kind of what I think of. It's like a party game where when you're together with friends, like a party, that's the game you throw on. But um, yeah, I've I've always loved these games. Yeah, like I said, when you when you get to someone, you're like, don't steal my star. Don't steal. Ah, you stole my star. Why would you do that? Or you get the genie lamp. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm screwed here. Yeah. All right. You try to like calculate it out. Can I get the star and then use my genie lamp? Mm-hmm. But can I risk someone stealing my item? Yeah. And then the whole thing of like, I have to roll the die perfectly to get to this spot, like kind of thing. And uh, the and mini games, like, yeah, the mini games were always just like the best. It's the same with like Fusion Frenzy or uh, even South Park Chef's Love Shack. I played that as a kid all the time. Just the mini games. Or Sonic. Or Sonic Shuffle. Sonic. Uh, I don't think I've ever played that one. I played Sonic Adventure too. It's a Genesis. It's a it's a Sega Saturn version of Mario Party with Sonic. Oh, gotcha. But yeah, like I I love these kinds of games, and yeah, because obviously the board is kind of the the fun strategy part. But it's like once you get to the mini game, like please land on this one, please land on it. Ah, we're playing that one. Like playing a freaking coin game again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I I adore these games. They're so much fun. I always played as um. Where, oh wait, quickly! Were you one of those people who was always uh, campaigning for Waluigi to be in Smash? <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, I want Waluigi. I'm still waiting for my Super War- Super Wario Bros. game with Waluigi and Wario. Oh, that'd be awesome! But uh, yeah, I I usually I'm always been a uh, actually who did I usually play as in this? Was it Shy Guy? No, I don't remember. But I Shy Guy and Yoshi have always been my favorites that I always try and play as. But um. Yeah, I, Mario Party games are so much fun. Just yeah, the the competition of once you get to the mini game, or if you have co op and you're like, all right, come on, we can do this. Like t- telling your buddy, like, all right, let's get this done. Or if you're stuck with the computer, and you're like, oh, we're screwed. <laughs> There's a game in Mario Party Four where one of your um you your it's a co op game, but mm-hmm. like you're two v two, and your teammate <clears throat> is running with a chest, you're running with a key, and you're in a giant maze. And I'll never forget yelling at my like going off on my sister about like we had to win the game i needed the coins what are you doing <laughs> and she threw it on she threw the game on purpose and she like wouldn't she just dropped her controller down and wouldn't move oh, so no. i had to like run through the whole maze to find her i was so mad <laughs> that's awesome destroying families out here mm-hmm. right, so yeah I, for me i have never played uh mario party uh, i guess i'm too what? old i'm too old i guess man like when that came out you know i was no longer a kid living at home playing with family. You know, I was out on my own probably. I don't 1998, know. 1998, Mario Party 1. Okay, well, I was in high school. But um, but yeah, I just never really played it. But, uh, you know, it looks great. Um, Hodge, if you have any more thoughts. Otherwise, uh, you got your number three? No, I, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, my number three, this is for all the youths out there, uh, is Fortnite. I wasn't, I wasn't, like for a while I was, in de- I was debating not putting it on the list and all that. And then I was like, I can't really not because I've put like a hundred hours into this game or something like that, or probably no, wait, no, not a hundred hours, like a hundred days into, <laughs> into this game. Um, yeah, I, it's, I, I'll have to look at my, uh, my Xbox stats in a second, but, um, yeah, I, it's this game. I remember when it was first announced, it looked like just a dumb cartoony game. And I was like, eh, it doesn't really like my, I remember my brother asking like, we should play Fortnite. I'm like, I don't really I don't want to do the building and all that. Like, it doesn't really appeal to me. And then I I got to it uh, in early like 2018 and I was obsessed with it because what it did is it brought me back to like Call of Duty days back in high school where you you'd get off work or you get home from doing whatever or it's the weekend and you have like six people texting you like, dude, squad up. We got to squad up like it was that kind of game. 
because it was like Call of Duty back in high school, and then it fell off where I was mostly just kind of playing either multiplayer games by myself with like a brother or someone, or I'd be playing single player games because it just didn't have that. Everyone was busy. They had their own lives. No one was really playing multiplayer games anymore. So when Fortnite came out, all of a sudden, every one of my friends is like back online, like, guys, we got to play. And so it was like the hype of just getting a squad together and getting in and the the thrill of getting that victory royale is like it's that's that chase in the dragon high that you're like i need we need to get a crown or we need to get a win back in the day you didn't have crowns it's just you won and so it was like that high of just like and then you get to that final it's just us first time each other over there i got one down like that just excitement of it and then if you get killed you're like oh they're sweaty like <laughs> i know oh, they're better build like uh then for like so we played it for I don't know, a year or two, just like religiously. And then we all kind of started falling off. The season started getting worse because it's a, you know, ever evolving game. They have new islands. Now they're on chapter five. So it's the fifth island. Um, and so we kind of fell off for a little bit. And then they brought back zero. They came back with zero build where you didn't even have to do building. And that was kind of because I've always been like not an amazing. I've been an OK Call of Duty player like for or a shooter. Uh, player so when it was zero build and you don't have these sweaty kids building a three-story mansion on top of you the second they they sniff your existence um i was able to you know start shooting people and i got better at killing and i got better and so i've been playing zero build mostly and it revitalized it again where i had friends who all fell off they're like yeah we're kind of done with it they all came back and so even up to recently we've been playing it a lot obviously we have other games we've been playing multiplayer together, but yeah, Fortnite is just one of those games where it's fun and it's exciting to win and all that, but it was, I love it because it revitalized the everyone's online. Let's play kind of mentality of like, let's get together and play this game kind of thing. So I love it for that mostly. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fortnite. I don't play it. I don't like it. I hate that game. Um, so I got nothing really to say. I have a personal <laughs> vendetta, a personal grudge against that game. I just, my only I hate vendetta it. against the I hate game. it. The only, my only vendetta is the the zoomer or like oh, even younger than zoomer, like, like music, floss, dancing yeah, kids, like the, and shit, the, like the dances sort of and music. Like, get out I, here. Yeah, I I don't like that part. But the gameplay is it's it's so good. Like there isn't there's very few games that could be considered like a better feeling like shooter than that game it, the gameplay genuinely is very good despite if you don't like the content or the the battle royale or whatever the the it's a very well made game it plays very well too yeah but yeah all right uh sean did you have anything about fortnite before we move on my only experience with fortnite is through my students yeah it's probably <laughs> very cringe I will say. very cringe yep, inducing i'm sure all i'm gonna say yeah <laughs> I, I understand that those... That's why. That's why it's funny thinking of like there's all these kids playing, and then you got me who's like a, a stoned thirty something year old playing with my friends. Like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> like these kids versus these adults who are just like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. You're getting killed. Hey, Sean, you <laughs> talked about taking points away from the kid with the Bucky shirt earlier, but if you if I saw one of my students doing freaking the floss dance in class, he's definitely losing points. That little well, no one little bastard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good. They need to learn. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so that was Fortnite for Hodge. Let me go ahead and move on to my number three, which is, let me pull up my thing. It's going to be, okay, this is going to be a game that I'm sure almost none of you guys have played, but shout out to Lockmort because I know he played it. We talked about this. It's going to be Dark Age of Camelot. This is an old MMO PvP game, player versus player. That's what it was all about. Um, Really love this game. Played it for hundreds, thousands of hours, just leveling up your characters, joining guilds, um, you know, doing the the PvP battlegrounds, um, going out to the uh, the frontier or whatever where you had the big open uh, battle where it was realm versus realm versus realm. It basically had three. K- Kitty, I am recording a podcast. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> no respect. I'm telling you. He's yeah. like a Fortnite cat. Yeah, He's like a Fortnite kid sometimes. Um, but yeah, so DAOC, Dark Age of Camelot, just going out there, the realm versus realm versus realm, going out there fighting for your side, um, taking keeps, doing all kinds of stuff. It was just a lot of fun. Um, so much fun. So many memories playing with one of my best friends, Henry. Shout out to him. Uh, we played, we just grinded that game, just leveling up all kinds of characters. And then we would re-roll. We'd be like, oh, now I want to make a vampire. Oh, now I want to make a... Uh, 
like an infiltrator or whatever, or oh, I want to make a ranger and like just making all these different classes and then leveling them up and then going to the battlegrounds and PVPing and killing people and ganking people and taking their keep and their fort. That was so much fun. So many great memories there. Shout out to Dark Age of Camelot. Um, shout out again, like I said, to Lock Mort because he knows he's played this. We talked about it. He loves it um, as well. I think that's his favorite MMO and it's mine too. So shout out to that and, and, and kind of all encompassing, not just Dark Age of Camelot, um, but kind of as like a side thing, all of those uh, player versus player MMOs that I used to play back in the day, like uh, Asheron's Call and uh, Shadowbane. It was just, that was just the time for me. I had so much fun. Just, I just love P, uh, player versus player. That's what I live for. I just wanted to kill other players and I wanted to loot and take their shit and I wanted to take their castle and make it mine. Um, and do like big, big uh, diplomacy, nation building stuff. It was just a lot of fun, a real social experience. Um, so that's it for me. Dark Age of Camelot. I don't imagine that either of you guys have anything to say about this. Never uh, heard of it. Probably before your time. <laughs> I think it came out in 2003, 2004. So. 2001, I just looked it up. Oh, 2001. Wow. Okay. Yeah, long time ago. Great, great stuff. It's still ongoing, actually. They're still running the game. Um, there's not a ton of people playing it. It's a smaller uh, audience now, but it is still going on. All right, hmm. let's go ahead and pass it over to Sean Mason, number two. All right, my number two is Crash Team Racing, nice. the definitive kart racer. Um, <laughs> much better than Mario Kart. I gotta um, go. Sure. Um, so this game takes a lot more skill than Mario Kart, to be to be honest. Um, uh, I I adored this game. We had a multi tap for my PS2, so we could play four player on Crash Team Racing, and we played it throughout high school. And it's still one of the games that me and my friends get together. We play. We play the Nitro Kart. We play like the um the updated remastered version, the remake basically, which I actually put two hundred and fifty hours into on the PS4 version, and I actually played that game online all the time. So much so that you guys are going to be like, I can't believe Sean did this. I was in an online Crash Team Racing League, which had an online ranking system where I was in the top 50 in the world in it. I, my peak Dang. was 47. But there was this one guy who... So when you did like matchmaking on that game, you would just get paired up with people who had similar skill levels. And it got to the point where I was doing matchmaking and I was pairing up with people that I just recognized their names from like more friends on PSN, never talked before, but I'm like, oh, I've played against them before because I just kept getting matched up against them. And the game takes so much skill. And this guy, his name was Ripto6678, was number one in the world. He was absolutely insane. He stole my, he stole my PlayStation friends list. And the only game he's played is Crash. <laughs> um, but I adore this game. Um, my go-to character, Small Norm. Shout out to Small Norm. Um, what I like about this game is they released... So Activision, I know everyone gives them a lot, of, a lot of heat, a lot of crap. They released a patch for this game in that you could play as any character and um, it would, like, with any type of stats. So, like, certain characters, like, heavy characters, their speed was something, their turn was something you know, balance like, like that, they changed it. So it was the engine, like the engine of the car rather than the character. So you can play So if you want to play as your favorite character, you can, there were so many skins and listen, everyone complained about the skins. Everything was unlockable in the game. I don't want to hear it. You just got to be good at the game. All right. Get good. All right. Sorry. Get good, play nerds. Um, I played this game for a year because that was, there was a year's worth of content. Each month was like a new season. And again, that was one of the online games that really took me. I played 250 hours in, from 2019 to June of 2019 to June of 2020. Wow. Um, Pandemic game. Yeah. Did I got you, so good at it. Did you ever play the original? Yeah, I play the original all the time. I had talked okay. about it. We had a multi-tap for, um, we had a multi-tap so we could play four player. Nice. So I, I was so hyped for it. I, we like loved Crash. Like that was, like we hated Mario Kart. We, up until Mario Kart Wii, I hated Mario Kart. And I'm still not that big of a fan. <sighs> Crash Team Racing is so much better because of the skill. It takes so much more skill. And it's it, and it's it's so much fun. The maps are iconic, the character. Like, I'm a Crash guy though, so I love I love Crash oh, Team. Oh, you would have liked it when they added Spyro. Yeah, I love I do love Crash Team Racing. I I I played the original and the remake. Uh I didn't platinum it cuz I remember there were some oh, dude, insane dude, that was the best platinum ever. I remember there were some insane ones that I was like not happening. Um but I did but, I I do love them both, but Mario Kart you just 64 the og is just still my favorite card oh. game of all time but it's nah yeah the uh 
yeah, crashing racing. It's I, I it, it it's it's great because yeah, like you said, I mean, it truly is like it's kind of like the Android versus Apple thing, or it's like Apple, it just it just runs well, and you know it's gonna work, and that's kind of how Mario Kart is. Whereas Crash Team Racing, it's customizable, and it's takes a lot more skill to kind of do it. Because yeah, it does. It is a harder kart game. It's just yeah, because. I mean, they're both kid games, but the Mario Kart is like definitely more kid game than Crash Team Racing. You have to kind of be able to whoop someone with it. But um, I love them both. But Mario Party or Mario Kart will always be my favorite. But Crash Team Racing is an amazing card game for sure. Getting getting the sacred. It's called the um, the sacred fire. They call it, which is like an unlimited. It's like an ultimate like like um, boost move. Getting that for like three laps like for the entire race peak peak that's how you get the platinum right there yeah that's how you get to number 47 in the world <laughs> crash yeah Nitro damn Kart. that's Nitro that's Fuel. impressive yeah i yep sean the sweat lord over here just dominating people and uh crash i respect it all right i don't really have anything to add about crash uh racing because i haven't played it yet, uh unfortunately so um all right hodge uh what was your number two my number two is actually this is a very recent game, but I've been obsessed with it. Is Hell Divers Two? Like I was pl- just playing the other night with uh, my cousin, brother, and buddy, and we were literally saying like this might be one of like the like our favorite games we've ever played because every single match is just a blast, and like because I was I was debating not including it because i didn't want it to be like recency bias or anything but like it's in the same way as Fortnite. it's kind of one of those things where it's like there's always people online it's kind of dwindled a little bit since in the last month or two just because you know people have lives and they're not just going to dedicate to they're not like me who will dedicate their (laughs) their night to a game that's been out for you know years like Fortnite. So like uh, people, you know, move on, want to play other stuff. But when it when it launched, especially it was another one of those where it's like, do you need a fourth? Ah, crap. You already have a full squad kind of thing. And um, it's just an unbelievably fun game. Like like I, we are talking about it briefly earlier. And but and I've talked gushed about it on <laughs> plenty of episodes of this already for probably seven for seven and me mentioning it. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just it's another one of those where it's it just gives me those same like that nostalgia vibe of um, we played this just everyone was online and whatnot. It was just yeah, I don't know. I I, I, I can't. I've talked about it so much. I don't even know what else to say about it. I I adore this game, and so I really do think it's probably my second favorite multiplayer game of all time. It's just that much fun. But yeah, okay. Hell Divers 2. Nice. I haven't played it. <laughs> so many games I haven't played, apparently. That's what happens when you're the single player RPG guy. You're playing all these 80 hour games. It's like yeah, it, it kind of limits you get one, the one amount game of stuff that you can months. play. <laughs> Dude, I play a bunch of JRPGs that are 80 to 100 hours, yet I'm still playing these games. Yeah. Except for Hell Divers, good. of course. Yeah, well, you're the GOAT, Sean. So. Yeah, I know. No, no, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Not even close, guys. So yeah. Hell Divers 2. All right. I think we're all satisfied with that one, right? Mm-hmm. I will move on to my number two. My number two is going to be Call of Duty. Call of Duty, I love it. I will pick a couple games from the Call of Duty series that were my favorites, um, but just in general, Call of Duty. Uh, I don't like Call of Duty that much anymore. I feel like it kind of sucks these days, but yeah. man, in the past, though, it was so magical. It was so good. I played so many thousands of hours with my friends. Um, shout out to Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. That was the first one that really got me into it. That was the game that pulled me away from halo three halo three was my number four pick and i was playing that a lot but then we all switched over to call of duty for modern warfare because they're like oh man this game is awesome it's realistic you only got to land a couple bullets to kill people there's kill streaks you can call in a helicopter super cool so call of duty four was amazing um also my favorite call of duty of all time was call of duty black ops one the very first one um, that Blackbird chopper gunner dogs, those those kill streaks, man. I, I had some games where I was getting like a hundred kills, hundred plus kills, um, just ra- just calling in Blackbird chopper gunner dogs on people, and the dogs would go crazy, and you'd get a really good chopper gunner on like an outdoor map, like jungle or something, and you'd get like twenty kills in, in the chopper gunner. Oh, uh, that was so much fun. Um, so yeah, shout out to that. As far as the newer Call of Duties, I feel like they su- they kind of suck now. 
Um, the most recent one that I did enjoy was Black Ops 4. Um, even though it was kind of crazy with all the specialist stuff, it was still fun, though, and it had really good kill streaks. Was so. Black Ops 4 the BR one? That they uh, didn't was, have a they had a BR. They had yeah, it was, a BR. It was just online. There was no campaign with that one, right? Uh, I think. I'm not sure. They had blackout mode was the BR. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, no, it was a lot of fun with the specialists where like you could earn um, your abilities. Um, like the one that I liked was the one where you had this big shield that had like a microwave turret built in. Um, and I would just troll people with that. Like you would set that up and like just camp in a room and kill a bunch of people. And that was just a lot of fun just trolling people. Ah, so you just admitted you were a camper in Call of Duty. Cool. I actually was not a camper in Call of Duty, but um, in Black Ops 4, though, that was getting towards the end where I was starting to get a, a bit annoyed of Call of Duty. Mm. Um, I started I started to just abuse the cheese because um, was, there was a lot of cheese, and I was getting frustrated with uh, some of the decisions they were making around the skill-based matchmaking and stuff and all the sweat lords in every game. Um, so I, I just started trying to abuse the cheese to piss other people off, mainly. Um, but yeah, no, like for my whole history, I was, you know, I used to do YouTube. I used to do uh, Call of Duty YouTube. I still got on my channel some montages and stuff. Um, now, I've always been a rusher, run and gun. That's what I like to do. Um, but yeah, Call of Duty, love it. Um, definitely, that's my number two. Um, you guys got anything you want to say about Call of Duty that we haven't already said? My only history with Call of Duty Online was my friend hiding it from Donnie in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my wife's really into Call of Duty. Like, she loves Call of Duty. She plays it all the time. Her and her friend group. Same thing with Halo. Um, and just little references that people used to make in middle school and high school. Like Noob Tube, which is like the grenade launcher, I think. Yeah, the grenade the launcher, the Noob Tube. Mm -hmm. um, and then people used to yell all the time, Enemy AC 130 above! <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah um call of duty yeah i've played since the original uh i've i loved it up until or the last one i actually really enjoyed surprisingly because a lot of people didn't like it was vanguard i actually really i never played the campaign so i don't know if that's any good probably not but i liked that it went kind of back to the world war ii setting and my i actually wasn't gonna buy it because i got i was burnt out on call of duty but uh i went out for dinner and drinks with some friends and all three of them had it and they're like, go home and download it. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't like the new call of duties. And, uh, but then they got a few drinks in me and it was on sale. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll download it. And then we played it and I, I had a lot of fun with it, especially cause it was when it was, or maybe I can't, it was either that one or cold war where that was when I first bought an elite controller. And so my KD was horrible. I was getting my ass kicked just because I hadn't really played them that much. Like I played uh, Modern Warfare 3 and then I just kind of fell off of them for, at, for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just wasn't playing them. And so I was getting my ass kicked. And then I got an elite controller where you can shorten the trigger pull. And yep. that's when I would start just doing single fire rifles and just destroyed people with that rifle, with that pull. So I got really good at it. Again. <laughs> and uh, so I can't. Yes, yeah, so, but I haven't played one since Vanguard. I, I missed like because, you know, the golden days was like four when it was just Infinity War and Treyarch just trading off each year. Yep. And those were just like that was peak Call of Duty. And then when like Sledgehammer took over and Advanced Warfare came out, I was like, I'm out. This this looks fucking terrible. <laughs> like, I I yeah. bought inf like I said before, I bought Infinite Warfare for the Call of Duty Four remaster. I play I bought Cold War just because it launched with the console, and so I wanted a next gen cons uh, next gen game. So I bought it with that, and I enjoyed it. I I didn't finish the campaign. I wasn't big on it. I heard a lot of people liked it, but I wasn't big on it. But the online was pretty fun. I enjoyed that one. And then Vanguard. And then I just haven't really played since. I don't care anymore. I don't know how many have been out since then. I don't know or care really, honestly. But uh, okay. oh, actually, I did play Modern Warfare, the remake one. And then I think a little bit of two. I don't remember. But yeah, I, ju I just Call of Duty isn't the same to me anymore. It's those older ones that are just so, so good. But yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, good stuff. I had a, a scuff gaming controller back in the day, like custom made controller before the mm -hmm. Elite came out. Um, and it had like the trigger stops and the back paddles and stuff. Uh, and I had the one on the Xbox 360. Um, and what was really cool about that is that you could choose 
it was an Xbox 360 controller, but you could choose to have the PlayStation 3 domed analog stick um, mm. because they would custom build it. And that's what I did. So I had an Xbox 360 controller that had the PlayStation 3 domed analog stick, which was real nice, good for aiming. Um, and it had trigger stops and back paddle um, so you could jump and reload and stuff for, without uh, taking your fingers off the stick. Oh, that was good times. Great. Yeah. My cousin. Um, but all my- right. Yeah, my cousin Kevin's better than me at Call of Duty, and he did all the backpack. He like he has the elite control because I actually ordered two of the Master Chief ones. I can't remember why I did it for some reason, and so he just bought one from me. And yeah, he does all four back paddles where he has jump crouch and all that stuff. So he's he's moving around a lot better than me because I I'm too stupid to learn the back paddles. <laughs> All right. All right. Good stuff. Shout out to Call of Duty. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and move on now to our number one favorite multiplayer games of all time. But before we do that, I just want to say if you guys are still listening to the podcast, if you haven't yet, please go ahead and hit that like button. It only takes a second. It really does help us out a lot with the algorithm and getting some listeners and we appreciate it. So thank you, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to Sean Mason, your number one game, sir. All right, I kind of teased it earlier. It's the Smash Brothers series in general. Um, I adore these games. Um, I got my, my first game for my GameCube August 15th, 2002. I got Melee with my GameCube and four controllers. Played so many hours of Melee. Uh, Super Smash Brothers Brawl, I was in, it was in March of 2008. I was in sixth grade. I went to the midnight release for that. Me and my, it's like, it's like five of us, me and my friends, and my sister was in, like, uh, in high school. She's a freshman in high school. She was there with us too. And um, we we're the only, like, we were the youngest people there. And we had, like, there was, like, a Smash tournament. We were in that. And I remember just Brawl, the anticipation for Brawl was so hype. And going to the Smash Dojo every day, they'd release, like, a little bit of news every morning at, like, 6 a.m. Eastern time. And we used to, like, look for it, like, before school. And some days it'd be, like, they'd release, like, an item. Other days it'd be, like, a character. And you'd be like, oh my God. Freaking, who's, the, oh my gosh, I can't believe Lucario is going to be in the game. Pokemon trainer, what is this? Or you'd get up and it'd be like a song. And you'd be like, oh, yeah. This is song. <laughs> um, but yeah, that anticipation for Brawl was hype. And then like playing it, I'll never, I'll me- I remember July 3rd, 2008, until like July 4th. I had like a big sleepover on July 3rd. And um, like, do you remember on the, do either of you have a, no, Hodge, you didn't have a Wii. Um, no. Midnight, did you have a Wii? I had a Wii, but like I mentioned earlier, I have never played Smash Brothers. I know, but did you remember on the Wii how if you like there was like a mail section and if you like click there was like um if you if you clicked in the mail section it would tell you like the hours you played for each game that day. Do you remember that? Uh vaguely. It sounds familiar. The July third day we played like twelve and a half hours of Smash Brothers <laughs> that day. And I'll never forget because we took a picture we took like a picture with it, like a camera, like an actual camera. Yeah. Thing. And um, we just played so much of that game. And I remember, like, getting Sonic in that game was so hype. We're like, people like, Sonic's in this game. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, like, when Smash for Wii U came out um, and Smash for 3DS, we were all about that. We played so many hours of that game. College, that was, like, that was the thing we did. We played so much Smash Brothers. And, like I said, just so many different characters. The, the, the amount of characters in this game is ridiculous. And I know everyone complains. There's so many sword fighting characters. But... In the grand scheme of things, there's not that many sword fighting characters compared to the entire roster. People, there's so many more. People yeah. always complain about the amount of Fire Emblem characters, which uh, for me, that wouldn't bother me because I'm a big Fire Emblem fan. I love Fire Emblem. So. And there's not even that many. There's like, there's not that many. People just like to complain many. probably. Well, I think the complaint yeah. was also the fact that they were added characters. So every time they added it, it just like another sword character is being added. It's like, well, I mean, if they're part of the roster already, that's fine. But it's kind of like Didn't, when half of the characters being added are that, then I can understand it. But yeah, it's definitely not, not as oh, many as they make it seem. Sorry. Didn't they add the goat Sephiroth? I, I didn't, I saw yeah, they that. Did. They added they had a Sephiroth, they had a Cloud, they added Ridley. Ridley was, I was, my mind was blown when they added Ridley because I really wanted Ridley for Brawl. Who's like, Ridley? All the way back in Brawl. It's a Metroid villain. Oh, okay. I, I haven't played much Red, Metroid, so. Um, I, my mind was blown with that. Just so many memories just playing multiplayer. On Super Smash Bros. Brawl, they had to create a stage mode, and we used to create the stage with giant square, and in the top left corner, there'd be like a little opening at the top. We called it Jail, and you'd jump into the jail, and you just 
beat the crap out of each other and like you'd randomly everyone would have 999 damage and he'd be like all right who can randomly get launched out of the side of the jail um the most satisfying playing 99 deal. live match yeah playing 99 live matches just like stuff like that it's just so much fun i have so much so many good memories it's that's that's the thing yeah. I do love that about Smash is they can customize which items are going to be in the game and all that. Like it's it's so customizable. It's not just like, all right, you play as these characters on this map. Go like you can change so much about each game. And it that that adds you to can it customize so much. what song plays on which stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you can cut like it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. I just love Smash. And yeah, Smash Bros. My favorite multiplayer game. Okay. Nice. Shout out. Shout out to Smash Brothers. Yeah, the thing about that for me is like I, the concept to me seems super easy. I'm like, okay, this seems easy to understand and it sounds awesome. You just beat them up and you knock them off the stage, right? But then at, when I watch people play Smash, I see someone that's clearly getting knocked the fuck off the stage and then all of a sudden they do some super like quadruple jump dash maneuver and get back on. And I'm like, what the fuck? Well, this is recovery. How do you move. how do you they're not get reco- a- They call it recovery move. Okay. And then like what, you only have so many recovery moves? Well, if you do a recovery move, after you do your recovery move, you can't do any other moves. If you don't get back to the state, like like you until you hit the ground, you're like, mm. basically, you can't do any other move. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds good. It sounds fun. Um, shout out to Smash Brothers. Shout out to Fire Emblem characters. I love Fire Emblem. Um, I need. I can't wait to play some more Fire Emblem. I got to get a Switch too, and it better be backwards compatible. Nintendo, you son of a bitch. All right, Hodge. What is your number one, sir? My number one is Call of Duty 4. I'm going to specify Woo! it. I do love, like, I love uh, World at War. I was debating putting that one on my list. That's the one that just fell off of it. Because, but it was because of Nazi Zombies, because I'd introduced it. And the original Nazi Zombie map is perfection. I love that one so much. But um, yeah, Call of Duty that. 4, it's like you said, when it was Halo 3 just constantly until call of duty 4 came out and then that's kind of when the war of like what's what's the better shooter halo 3 or call of duty 4 and it's call of duty 4 i'm gonna say that right now it is but it's i i do love i do love halo 3 obviously but yeah call of duty 4 was a game changer that's what put call of duty on the map like you said before like i was an og playing the other ones but 4 was the one that that was the first game that I was like addicted to where I had days and days and days of uh, play time every single night, every single weekend. It was my friends getting, all right, we're playing call of duty, get online. And that was back before party chat was a thing on Xbox. So you, if you had more than one person you were playing with, you had to listen to the game chat and it got brutal. Um, but, but, uh, uh, it, it, uh, especially in search and destroy when, when you died, everyone was in the lobby together and you're just shit talking each other. Like, yeah, we got the best memories. Yeah. But, um, call of duty four. Yeah. It, it changed. And and, I mean, obviously it's multiplayer, but that campaign was so good. Like it was like shooters don't usually have the, that great of campaigns, but that one was unbelievably good. But I loved it was it was we had to Sam. I, I wasn't looking. I was just going to say, you know, you talked about the campaign of that. How about mm-hmm. like right when you fire it up? 50,000 people 50, used to live here. People. Now it's a ghost. Now town. it's a ghost town. Yeah. So iconic. It's so good. And, and uh, the mission in the campaign where you're crawling on the ground in the ghillie suit. Oh, and all gillied up. The soldiers are passing. It's, you. Oh, it's so good. It's honestly Sorry, one. Go of, ahead. It's one of the best campaign missions of, of all time. But um. No, yeah, the I loved it was my favorite multiplayer one because it was just it played so well, but it was simple, it, which is what I loved about it. Mm-hmm. It's you had your guns when you leveled up, you got certain guns when you had that gun, it leveled up to either you had kill where you got new skins or headshots, you got new skins and that was it. And as mm-hmm. the gun leveled up, you got different, you know, scopes and all like that. That's all it was. It was super simple. And the prestige was you got to 55 you prestiged or you could get the you could stay at that and try and get the golden guns, which was really, uh, really cool. And I just love the simplicity of it because later it became like you can level it up if you use this attachment and this attachment. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. That's not fun to me. <laughs> like, just make it simple like it wasn't for. And even when they remastered it, they changed it. And I was like, why did you do that? Like, I just remaster it as is and keep it as is. But call, so Call of Duty 4, it was just, it played so well. Every level was good. Like there wasn't a level that would, lo- I and mean, there are levels where I'm like, ah, I'm going to get my ass kicked on this one. I'm not very good on this one. But there were so many maps like, or like uh, playing Shipment, 
<laughs> that map was crazy. It was awesome. You'd leave with 70 kills if you're playing like domination or headquarters or whatever. And it was, it was so much fun. And it was also simple with the, 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 the streaks. It was either three, five, seven. That's all it was. It wasn't customizable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. UAV airstrike helicopter. That's it. And it was just, it was so simple and just amazing. I, I played so much, even when modern warfare two came out, we I played with my friends for a while, and then after a while, we're like, let's just go back to four, and we'd stop playing two, and we went back to playing Call of Duty four, which is, I know that's um, a lot of people are going to take a lot of offense to that because a lot of people say Modern Warfare two is the best of all time, which I don't get that. It's great, it's I, not. It, yeah, it's a fun game, but it's Call of Duty four is by far my favorite. Uh, then yeah, World at War, like I said, Nazi Zombies, Call, Modern Warfare two is good. Um. Uh, what was the oh, Black Ops? That was the one after that. That was uh, my favorite of all time. Black Ops one. Black Ops. It's a great. It's a that one was fantastic. The campaign was fantastic. Also, it but, was. Uh, the ki- multiplayer is great. Black Ops two. It, I I fell off it a little bit because it did like the split between the Vietnam era and like the futuristic, and I was like, I don't, know. I don't like the futuristic yeah. stuff. And then of course they went overboard with that with like advanced warfare and infinite warfare and stuff. Like I said earlier, fell off at that point. But yeah, Call of Duty four. It's it's by far my favorite multiplayer game of all time when they re when uh microsoft re-upped the servers like a little bit ago in preparation of buying abk uh we all hopped in a cod for and it was it was so cool being back in that like the just the original one it was just as fun as we remembered it uh our skills had atrophied a little bit we weren't playing as well but uh (laughs) but yeah it was uh yeah i love that game so much i was a 55 gold cross i prestiged it all i leveled everything up when we got back in there so i had nothing to really earn but yeah that was, it's my favorite multiplayer game of all time for sure yeah i agree I, very good shout out to those old call of duty lobbies man Th- those lo- those call of duty voice chats will put hair on your chest you would hear the most out of pocket racist offensive (laughs) shit in those lobbies people were just going crazy man people were just throwing out slurs calling your mom fat calling you gay like everything that you can think of you suck but man was it uh it was a fun time though because the competition like you talk a bunch of shit but then you'd have to back it up when that Mm. next round started you had to back it up and get those kills and get the win and then afterwards you'd be like yeah what's up now what's up now that's what i thought dude (laughs) i remember i remember uh there was i don't know what the guy's name was i'll just call him binky i don't know what it was but there was this guy who was in a game with us and he was this annoying kid you could tell he was probably like 12 years old or something like that and just (laughs) wouldn't shut up and he was so annoying and me and my friends like shut the hell up because you couldn't even mute people back then uh so we would just keep yelling at him to shut up and eventually we left our game and we went to just go do a private like private match with just us and he joined and and it was funny because while we were playing i remember it 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 was like a movie script we're just sitting there playing and then one of my buddies goes man i miss binky and then literally a second later he joins the guys i'm back and we're like no (laughs) how did you find Uh, us and so but yeah it was yeah i loved playing it it was so much fun call it Call of Duty was a moment. It was special. Mm -hmm. They've lost their way. You talked about it was so simple back in the day, and that was what's great about it. The maps were, there wasn't a bunch of verticality on the maps. When you were navigating the map, you would go, you don't even have to look two ways. You'd have to look to the straight, and you'd have to look to the left. And that's pretty much it. Nowadays, there's all this verticality. There's a ramp here. There's there's windows up there. You got to look at like 36 places that where you can get shot from. There's all this chaos, and it sucks. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and keep it moving now. Um, I think we're satisfied with call of duty right yep um sean you already mentioned that you weren't a huge call of duty guy so let me go ahead and move on to my number one pick here it is going to be smite battleground of the gods i love smite um shout out again to mr maddie plays because he also was a smite gamer i know he's he like myself has put in hundreds thousand plus hours really looking forward to smite 2 which is coming soon i recommend it to everyone if you like um If you like playing competitive games, MOBAs, um, or even just like a third person action, like role playing type game, um, Smite will satisfy that itch because it is third person over the shoulder. Um, It's not one of those isometric top down clicky, clicky, clicky like uh, League of Legends. Um, You actually control it with the analog stick or the WASD. You have your abilities. You're playing as gods. So you're playing as Poseidon. You're playing as Zeus. You're playing as, you know, Chalk and Medusa and all of these gods from mythology. Um, and you just go out there, um, you know, three, three versus three joust mode where it's just one lane and you guys fight and then you have to take the tower 
and then you have to take their Phoenix and then you have to kill their Titan and you win the game and they're trying to stop you. Um, or there's the conquest mode, which is like the professional style where it's three lanes um, and it's five versus five and you have your dedicated roles. You got the mid laner in the middle. You've got your uh, ADC, your uh, attack damage carry, which is like a hunter um, over on the, the one lane. And then you have your solo in the other lane, which is like a warrior usually. Um, and then you have a jungler who runs through the jungle and gets the buff and helps people in ganks. Um, and there, and then you also have a support, which plays like a guardian that also roams around and helps people. Um, so it's really good. Um, the objective is just to push the lanes down, kill people, um, level up, get your gear built out, um, and then take out the towers, take out the other tower, take out their Phoenix, and then take out the Titan and you win the game. Um, so it is a lot of fun. Um, this is a game that, like I said, it's very accessible. Um, it's free to play as well. Um, you don't have to buy anything. Smite Two is is brand new. It's in all. It's in Unreal Engine Five. Um, it, it's looking good. It's free, um, and the alpha just started. So put that on your radar, people. Maybe not. Maybe not my two co-hosts because I don't know if you guys are super into that. But listeners, um, put Smite Two on your radar because it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun, and it is free, um, and it's not a game that's gonna ask a lot of money of you either. Like you don't have to spend any money really. Um, so good times. Smite shout out. I don't think you guys have played uh, Smite at all, have you? Have you guys seen anything of it? I just looked up a screenshot of it. A lot going on. A lot going on. <laughs> Second you said MOBA, my brain shut off. Dude, but this is like the accessible MOBA, like I said. It's third person. You just walk around with the analog stick. You throw out abilities. Like, let's say you're Poseidon. You're walking down the lane. You, you can just throw a Whirlpool ability on the enemy, which slows them and does damage. And then you could pop your ultimate, which is which is release the Kraken. And the big Kraken comes up from the ground and does like a thousand damage and kills them. Dude, it's fun, man. I love Smite. So that's my number one pick. And that's going to do it for us for the num the uh, five through one. Uh, we are running a little bit late here, so I don't want to keep everybody too long. Let's just go ahead and really quickly do some honorable mentions, but we're just going to mention them by name. We're not going to go into lengthy discussions. Uh, I have two honorable mentions that I want to give a shout out to NCAA football, the old games. I'm really excited about the new one coming. Love that. And CSGO, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I played that a lot for a while. Um, good times. So those are my two shout outs. Any quick shout outs, honorable mentions for you guys? Uh, I mentioned it last week that I was playing, well, the last episode, Kirby Air Ride. You got to throw out that one. Uh, Nicktoons Party Blast, an old PC game. Um, Digimon Rumble Arena and NBA 2K. Uh, yeah, 2K. He's on fire. Oh, uh, wait, no, that's no, that was Jam. Different company. Different company. I played a lot of NBA 2K uh, as well, Sean, uh, up until about 2012. That was when I fell off. That's when they started getting greedy with the VC. How about you, Hodge? Um, the only other one I can really think of that I'd want to shout out is Titanfall, the original one. Oh, loved it. Um, I, I loved it from the open beta till two came out. Like I, it was truly, I, uh, I understand people was complaining if there was no campaign, but that, that the, the fluidity of that game respawn doesn't miss that game. W was so, so, so good. And, but Titanfall two's campaign was good, but. Okay, so let me ask you this real quick. Okay. You love Titanfall, and you love BRs. What about Apex? Did you and your friends ever play any Apex Legends? Oh, yeah, I mean, really that's Respawn, Titanfall MOBA. Um, or not I, MOBA, BR. I, tr I tried um, going back to it recently, and people have gotten a lot sweatier in that game, so I couldn't do it anymore. But when it first launched, I really loved it. I truly loved it. I, I thought, honestly, I thought it was like the best BR game. Like I played Fortnite way more. And, but in terms of actual game, uh, Apex was probably the best BR in terms of gameplay. Cause respawns just, they're so good. It was everyone good. from infinity ward, which is my favorite call of duty studio. Yep. Yeah, uh, Vince Sampella yeah, and Adam so West. It's the same people. So <laughs> they just went to a new place and kept winning. So yeah, I love it. Well, there we go. Um, is everyone satisfied? I think that was a great discussion. Yep. Really good. All right. So that's going to do it for us, everybody. Thank you so much to the listeners out there. Um, one last time, leave a like. Got to get that shilling in. Um, but we really do. We appreciate you guys so much. Um, so goodbye, everybody. Sean, goodbye to you, sir. What any final thoughts for you? You guys are all the goats of your own world. <laughs> All Hello. right. All right. And then Hodge, final thoughts. Goodbye to you, sir. I need a shower. I worked out before this, so I'm swelling. I'm smelly.
<laughs> All right. Well, get get in a shower. I got to make some coffee. I'm, I didn't need to take a shower, too. I'm going to make some coffee, hop in the shower, and then I'm going to start editing this nice. episode. Nice. So that's going to be fun. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to need you to get me some graphics as well, maybe. Will do. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Um, all right. And that's going to do it for us. Um, please clap. Episode seven is done. Thank you so much. We love you. Have a great day, guys. And shout out to Bucky's. He is not overrated. Goodbye.